The following podcast may contain some adult language. You've been warned. Welcome to Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. This is a show dedicated to the Genesis role-playing system, created by Fantasy Flight Games and produced by Edge Studio. A show in which we, your hosts, discuss all things Genesis from both the players and a GM's perspective. I am Tony Fanning, and with me as always are my good friends and co-hosts, Mr. Christopher Holmes and Stefan Dragonspawn. What's up, gentlemen? Homie. Oh, I'm doing good. Been running some 5e D and D this past week, and um, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden and the old school uh, against the Giants last night. Um, been having pr- some pretty fun with it. Pretty, pretty good. And uh, daughter got me back in the Wow over the weekend. Fuck, <laughs> wasting my time doing that. Good Lord. <laughs> and then you know came up with our thing for tonight for advantageous threats thank you tony for that putting the pressure on us <laughs> jesus Whatever. oh sorry i did that i'm all on my own <laughs> yeah um but i'm foreshadowing there just a little bit um stefan how you doing buddy i'm doing good too it's a nice day today we were outside uh, the dogs were running around Preparing stuff for spring, and off and on uh, doing also a little more uh, adaptation to, for my Dragon Star setting to Genesis. So uh, been working on some of the other PDFs like Smuggler's Run and the uh, Player's Handbooks, uh, Player's Companion, I say, and uh, decided to do a separate one for the Imperial Supply, which is mostly just equipment. So uh, I'll be doing cool. P- separate PDFs just for that. Uh, but yeah, doing off and on so that I don't get uh, bored or just burnt out doing that. Other than that, uh, no, doing good. What about you, Tony? Uh, uh, I'm all <laughs> worn out, torn up. <laughs> I uh, I went out last night to a, a, a rock show and got a little drunk. <laughs> and then mowed the lawn hung over today and mm. I'm paying for it. <laughs> <sighs> but other than that, no, I'm uh, doing great. Everything RPG wise. I forget what six games going. I feel like oh, Mr. Yeah. Holmes here. I got, I got games every other day. <laughs> That's right. Uh, totally but, having fun with that Cal Cthulhu game you're running, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Cthulhu 5e. On, yeah. Yeah. Fun, but so yeah, I'm that's not forward. real life, man. Oh, I'm looking forward to just playing around with the uh, the um, cooking up a setting. So tonight's episode, yes. episode 81, Iron Chef Genesis, cooking up a setting part one, because there's a lot to it. So mm, there we'll is. have a part two later. Yes, the Iron Chef. <laughs> that's right. I love that show. I like Iron <laughs> Chef too. <laughs> I like the original, not the not the Americanized one. Hmm. So Kuri san. I've only seen excerpts. <laughs> awesome. Well then, uh, let's move on to boost the signal then, if you want. of the show where Stefan shares all that hot and steamy Genesis news fresh off the wire from Edge Studios and the, um, on the drive through RPG section of the Foundry. Well, maybe not all from Edge Studio, but in their, their section. From all of you out there, the community, people creating this stuff. What you got, Stefan? 
All right. So uh, today we have something. I try to I try to stay I'll, from now on at least in line with our uh, our show topic as much as I can. And in this case, I chose Studio 404. Just came out with their Mecha Creation and Campaign Supplement called Mecha Sys instead of Genesis. It's Mecha Sys. Cool. Yeah. So if you want a supplement, if you want a setting that has big giant robots, uh, this could be the book uh, ideal for uh, for it. So it covers it's fifty three pages uh, that gives you five new archetypes, uh, things like the daredevil or the kid, uh, and then seven careers, of course, so, uh, with things uh, that are typical like the the mecha pilot, the of course, and the goofball, so the the, the sidekick of the, the serious mecha pilot. There's <laughs> always a goofball that seems to be he, he's still good at what he does, but he doesn't always follow the rules. I kind of wrote, uh, read in the uh, sort of bio of that archetype, which has, or career, actually. Mm-hmm. Just kind of. And then they go over some of the skills, um, and they even split uh, gunnery into two, uh, two different gunnery skills, a bit like some settings do with melee or ranged. They've got cannons and missiles. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you want to be more specific since a lot of characters have spent a lot of time in mechs uh gunnery will be important so maybe splitting it can have a character focus more on one type of weapon than the other and then they add of course uh a few new skills like uh, mecha operation and of course uh, they add new talents like mecha duelist and the lock-on expert and many more after that, they also go over mecha construction, uh, various what they call build points, uh, depending on the chassis. Mechs that are small and light, those are, or some that are huge and heavy. And uh, one thing that I liked that they did is that they combine the stat blocks that have both characteristics like a PC. So uh, a mech will will have willpower, uh, presence, uh, anti-cunning, just to represent how awesome sometimes they, they might look on the battlefield, how, uh, how maybe their computer system operates and so forth. Uh, and, of course, the traditional stats of a vehicle, like system strain, uh, strain threshold, uh, and uh, hit thresholds, and, and their speeds and armor. And after that, they go on to describe different modes of locomotion, the weapons, secondary stats, uh, and upgrades, which act like talents for mechs that you can mm-hmm. buy. And they're set up in tiers uh, as well. Act like and, talents uh, in the sense that you spend experience points to buy them? Yes, Almost exactly. kind of how you do, how, how we did, how we saw in that one um, supplement for the, uh, what is it, the martial arts supplement? Yeah, where you spend XP to do kind of different martial arts moves or something. Okay, interesting. Yeah, exactly, and then new rules that uh, affect mechs, of course, because they're big and they're slightly different than cars or jets. So there are also mentions, uh, including combat options and, of course, specific critical hits uh, chart. Always like new critical hit charts. My God. Oh yeah, some of them are pretty good. Mm-hmm. In there, and gotta then, collect them all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then finally some sample mechs, of course. So, they, awesome. okay. and, and some mechs can be considered almost like minions. They talk about how, you know, especially in in anime, so you always have some mechs that the heroes just blow through. You know, uh, even though they're mechs, it's like nah, they they only have very few hit points, and uh, yeah. they're piloted by uh, <laughs> by the nameless ones. And then you've got some that are more rivals and, of course, the nemesis uh, type of, uh, of mechs. So, uh, as usual, available through DriveThruRPG. Link in the show notes. All of that for $9.95. That's a pretty good price for yeah. 50 pages well, of awesomeness, man. Yeah, great, great I, layout. Some cool art as well in there. So, I'm just happy that it's... I finally have a product that will allow me to flesh out one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever made mm-hmm. into a setting so that I can run it. That's Pacific right. Rim? Robot Jocks, the setting. <laughs> okay. Robot Jocks? 
Have I not seen that? <laughs> I'm gonna have to Google like, that. No, you're talking Pacific That's Rim. <laughs> fucking no, it's fuck. It's um, E is so cheesy, like Robotech slash Mech Warrior knockoff movie from the awesome. '80s. It is. Oh. It is. It is terrifically bad, dude. <laughs> I have a cheese powered family here. Oh it's yeah. Not, that's, oh, that's a good I've thing. seen <laughs> I've seen that movie. I've just Googled it. It is I, the Sharknado of robot <gasps> movies. I recognize the uh, awesome. the VHS uh cassette box kind of poster. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it was like direct, one of those direct to video things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. It was it was notoriously well acted. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, then there was one, another one similar called he Robot with Wars. Those great face. Yeah. <laughs> there was one in the same vein called Robot Wars, and one of the one of the robots looks like a big scorpion. Uh, yeah, but that was claymation. That was really, I that mean, stop, ma- stop wow. motion. Yeah. <laughs> that was done with stop motion. That's some good shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, all kidding aside. Uh, no, I actually will be um um using this as um when you come to the um mecca or ma- 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 machina, ma- machina section part? of the primordial machina uh, book mm-hmm. will be a go get this supplement because it will <laughs> help you make your machina <laughs> yeah <Sweet. laughs> well, that's good um so uh, that's pretty much what the machina section of our 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 uh our document's gonna say Go get this because yeah. they did all the work for me. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yeah, so it's good work, stuff. Uh, to the guys there, uh, I, I chatted with uh, one of the creators and graphic designers, Brett Bowen, very nice guy, who worked on this at 404 uh, Studio 404. They've, they've come up with a few other things. Uh, they say some of their other products are, are more the more stealthy products, like low key, but this is their big, out and loud and proud kind of product yeah you can't you can't be stealthy with a mech that's for sure no <laughs> they, they they started out loki uh, i'm not sure about that but uh maybe we can ask them in a supplement oh okay <laughs> or no awesome and that's it for boosting the signal uh go check them out i hope that helps uh the guys over there produce more stuff uh and uh a bit more uh Cash in their pocket and a bit more more exposure, whatever helps. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Welcome to the Books of Genesis. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Wow, you sound different there, Chris. Jeez. Um. um, This is where we break down a section of one of the books of Genesis bit by bit. This time, we get a taste of the random setting generator. Chapter 5 of the Expanded Player's Guide, pages 40 through 56. You like that? Getting a taste. I I see what you did there, Tony. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a very spicy section. It will be. Yes. So, turn to page 40. Follow along, if you'd like, of your expanded players guide and join us so we're gonna start we're gonna just kind of randomly roll up and play with it uh the three of us we're not actually gonna build these settings unless one of us really likes the one they roll um (laughs) but we're going to uh yeah we're just gonna dink with it a little bit now um what it, it tells you here on page 40, and I'm going to get this out of the way, is uh, before beginning documenting your setting, uh, you'll need a way to record your ideas as you develop your setting. The aforementioned setting sheet, that was aforementioned in the previous paragraph, um, which is the expanded setting creation sheet from Fantasy Flight Games, available on their website that you can download. Um and that's the original one or the expanded one. Either way. Um, also, in Drainsmith's Deposit of Everything, I think, yeah. um, there is a form fillable version uh, yes. that you can go pick up. That is where I found you- it for us so that we can record it for tonight. Thank you, uh, Scott. 
appreciate you doing that for us. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. Uh, for physical media, such as index cards, notebooks, uh, the uh, three-ring binders are the most adaptable, as you can rearrange material as you develop it. Sketchbooks are great for creating maps, thumbnail sketches, electronic media, obviously electronic media. I mean, where we would be with we didn't have that. Right. Um, or you can unless store you don't a collection know how to, of files. Unless you don't know how to freaking organize your files and such, and you can't really find anything. That's but actually are, a pretty good point that they made in the organizational part. <laughs> <laughs> there are campaign builder software out there. There's there um, yeah. there's um, World Anvil, Obsidian yeah. Portal. Uh, those are just two off the top of my head. There's there's others. Um, th either way, whatever or organizational method you choose, there are yeah. there's a ton I mean, of I ways a, to do it. I mean, I have a I have a little app on my phone called OneNote where you could you could just make you could just create notes. Or you could create like grocery lists. I use it for grocery lists or just make notes. So if I have an idea, I know, Tony, you do this a lot while you're at work. You just kind of come up with notes. And, you know, you just create a note. Just write it down. Yeah. Record I it. Use, yeah, I use uh, Google Keep. It's, it's almost yeah. like a post-it note notes. Yeah. You can use it as just a, mm -hmm. a broad note or a, a list so with check marks, yeah. So, yeah. which is good. If you ever have those creative moments, record yeah. them. And then yeah. if you get in the habit of doing that, you make it kind of second nature, and you know you'll That's be it. amazed like how just how much information you, you'd have. Yeah, and some life. of these, and some of these, you know, uh, like OneNote and Google Keep are available like cross-platform, so on your computer, your laptop, your yep. phone. So you, when you're out in the grocery shopping uh, waiting line, you know, have an idea, write it down, and you can right. flesh it out at, at home. I do some of my best thinking when I'm supposed to be thinking about work. <laughs> um, so I have that available to me. Um, and, you know, I used to carry around little, um, basically, um, moleskin, moleskine mm -hmm. um, yeah. notepads, and I would fill those out all the time. Problem is, you can't take those out onto, a you know, a, the shop floor at work or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, filling it in on my cell phone and then I can take yeah. it from one media to another and move it rather easily. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say, before we, before we go on, this first sentence in this section, creating a setting, it's very interesting to me that they say it like this. Creating a new setting gets to the heart of the Genesis role-playing game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The heart of it. You know, because... I mean, the Genesis role-playing game, when, that, when the rule book first came out, people always were, like, talking about, oh, man, look at the art in this. It kind of sucks. It, it's not, like, it's it's not complete. Well, that's because the, the, the designers made a choice that it's more of a toolkit for you to build on. And this mm -hmm. is what is the heart of it. A well, set, yeah, you know, Genesis uh, is, you know, a play on words, generic system. You know, uh -huh. it's, it's for multiple, multiple yeah. settings, just like other... Other generic and, systems that are out there of different names. Yeah. So, and there are people who have, um, you know, created settings for mm -hmm. Genesis, their own settings, um, yeah. and marketed them on Drive Through. There is nothing wrong with using these um, these methods to create something that you wish to share with the community. Whether you want to throw it up there on um, a yeah. Discord server and share it with everybody, or whether you want to, uh, you know, market it, get your own art for it, market it, and put it up on the drive-through RPG for others to play. Mm -hmm. This is that Do it. in an, in that process in a nutshell. So yeah, yeah, yep. Um, now I did want to mention there's uh, one paragraph here at the tail end of um, the organizational methods section and since okay. we were talking about you know organizing and whatnot and, and it's important to note that as you document your material you should always think about what is just for you as the creator of the setting and the gm if you're just running it for your friends uh, and what is for your players understood and my little uh word to the wise or a uh, bit of advice pro tip, I guess, not really, I'm not a pro, I don't get paid, um, <laughs> would be 
mm-hmm. to format your player section stuff much like you see it formatted in the Genesis source books. Um, you know, yeah. archetypes, follow that with uh, careers, follow that with a skill descriptor of what skills, new skills list you have, follow that with a list of talents and um, your gear section, equipment, yeah. and, and then yeah. adversaries. Now, because the adversaries are more of a GM section but right. um but that way if you format it like that there's a familiarity everyone who yep. opens up that product if you share it with others later they'll know immediately what to look for where yeah well yeah most good most books will put player information towards the beginning and that, that both gms and players mm-hmm. uh, will and, find and, once- and then towards the end more specific just for the gm yeah right and and great way to do lead in with the setting description you know that you get from doing this This. um yep uh lead in with your setting description of what it is to to play the game what tropes and what themes you're 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 uh trying to achieve Mm -hmm. and then go into that player information Uh, yeah yeah good idea just an idea was there any any tips on how you separate that information that you do for yourself there, Tony, um, beyond like, here's a GM folder, here's a player's folder or section of the document. Separate document for each one. Okay. Uh, each, each section and then as a mm-hmm. section is finished, combine them in the order that you want them until you have one document. Gotcha. Now, when you're writing something, say if you're writing something for a section of like, maybe when you were writing for the uh, Primordial Machina, like the, the adventure you're writing for us here and you were writing the area of this world when you were writing it for yourself, writing all the information out, were you making notes on this blurb is going to be my elevator speech that I'm going to read to the players? Yeah. When I do that, I try to put, um, it's easy to format it. You can put a different, um, what I do is I'll highlight that text, any text that I want to write in. Italicize it, put it in a block um, yeah. okay. with a, with a with a different shading behind it, okay. uh, much like you'd see in an adventure module. Mm-hmm. I do the same thing when I'm writing. If it's something that I want to share, elevator pitch style with players, as I'm uh, whether I'm reading it out loud to them or I want them to see it to pop out when okay. they open a document. Um, that's you do okay. that. Italicize it, throw a different shading behind it. Got it. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Excellent. All right. All right. Well, first step. No, yeah. let's, uh, well, <laughs> let's, well, I mean, really, let's, let's I mean, talk about some stuff here. Really, the step, I mean, before we go into like what the different steps are, there are two techniques. Mm-hmm. We're going to be using the randomized techniques tonight, where we're just going to, we're just going to, we're just going to roll some dice. <laughs> We've randomly determine the, the, the results. We've already done the other one, which is the brainstorming one, where you basically take out a piece of paper, take a few minutes, or word processor, your your OneNote app, whatever, and then um, just jot down what interests you, what comes up with, or get on your podcast recording with your two buddies and start <laughs> throwing ideas out. And then throw, throw out games. ideas that you know they're not going to say, that they're not going to say no to, because they don't say no to. Because when you're brainstorming, you don't say no. You just <laughs> throw stuff on the wall and you let it stick and That's whatever, yeah. you see know, like the insect race, right? And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you throw it hard, and <laughs> if you throw it hard enough and often enough, it will stick. Exactly. <laughs> and then and then you ask yourself, and then so this is in the um, so this is a nice sidebar on page um forty one. A uh, couple of the questions here. Um, what do you want to get out of the setting? What makes it fun and interesting to you and your players? That's important to know. Ask yourself what makes fun for your players. Now, I know a few sessions ago, I asked my buddies, what do you enjoy? Do you enjoy more combat? Do you enjoy puzzles, the story, and what? You know, I kind of know them as it is, but ask those questions what people's what tastes they... evolve it doesn't hurt to yeah. ask your players that often it's very much their game as it is yours 
you know, yeah. um, and if you have that attitude, that's, that attitude has changed for me since I've been playing a narrative dice system more so I've noticed, right? I've made it more of our game instead of I'm the GM, I get to welcome mm-hmm. to my world. No, it's our world, baby. We're having fun, you know. Um, are there any pre-existing settings you want to use as a basis and yeah, expand upon? Those yeah, robot jocks. Yeah, there you go. Something like that. <laughs> are there are there tones and themes you want to explore and incorporate? You know, um, and then uh, then like after you have these ideas, um, move on to just developing it. And then um, it says here, don't worry if some of the ideas conflict with each other at this stage. Just throw them out there, right? Like lumberjacks really don't go well with bugs, but who cares? We kept them in there, and it's working. Yeah, yeah it's we, working. I think we have a lumberjack bug, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> we might have if you if he passes it all the tests. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, um, but then you know, drop some of the ideas when you need to, and as it comes through. But uh, you know, just when you're brainstorming, just throw it out there, keep it up there, and then as a pass through the first time, just throw everything out there that you want. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. So what are the steps we're going to go through? Well, we're only going to go through half of these, but what are all six steps here, Stefan? All right. So there's step one, two, three, four, five, and six. There. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Thank you, sir. Moving on. Well, all, right. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. So if you, if you want a bit more detail, step one Just is about using simple. tropes and themes. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, Selecting a technology level on step two. Okay. Then you want to build your world. So a little bit more detail about the world itself in step three. Okay. Step four. Love me a bit, a bit more. No, sorry. Uh, uh, determine religion and cosmology. So, so what do people people Don't believe be. in? Yes, what people believe in, what the how the world Don't. is set up, kind of thing. How it created, got created, maybe. Step five, a bit more grounded, uh, more down to earth, so like governments, uh, general society, how people are organized. And then step six has some other various steps included in that. Fill in details and determine rules. Excellent. Right so, um, on. Yeah. And, so. and a lot of these steps have sub steps and other categories within them. Pardon so. Me. Might not be able to get to them this session, uh, this uh, show, but we'll uh, get to them eventually. Right. Well, we're going to get through the first three steps tonight. At least, yes. Mm-hmm. At least. All right. Okay. So we just I almost forgot I had to have one. freaking dice out for this. Holy crud just buckets. De- just D10s, man. Just unless you can, unless you can read I'm, those. Uh... I'm looking for my D10s. I know what I need. <laughs> damn it. Can you read the D10s, Tony? I can't. <laughs> I'm not Those colorblind fun- like some other friends okay. we have. Gotcha. Those are the ones with ten sides. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I said I'm hungover, not drunk, guys. Jeez. <laughs> and if you have percentile dice, some of the some of the numbers are do- like doubles. You know, like five zero three zero zero zero. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, while Tony's finding his dice, there's another sidebar here on 42 that I want to mention. It's called player buy-in. It kind of kind of a follow-on to mm-hmm. to kind of involving your players in the, this process, which could help. You know, um, try to sell some of the ideas to your likely players. You know, what piques your interest? Like they said, what is what's what what's um would yeah, they get excited about? Yeah, part of this. They, yeah. What would they uh, grab grab onto more? Right. What well, wouldn't they? Then you don't have to maybe tweak those ideas as much. Now, mm-hmm. on the flip side of that, maybe you could find out like if or is there anything that they might be getting offended by or disturbed yeah. by, and then you you'll want to keep those elements in most definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, <laughs> or, they're offended. <laughs> they're offended by lumberjacks because it's appropriation, Canadian appropriation. That's totally got to keep it in. That. Keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but seriously, I mean, if if there there you know there there are elements in the setting that 
you know, your players might say, you know what, I don't feel too comfortable, you know, I don't feel comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're your friends, you know, you know, hey, even if they're not your friends, respect it. You know, if you have that it. one buddy who had a really, really, really bad experience at cheerleading camp, do not do <laughs> a setting about being cheerleaders. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. I mean, have it set at a I, camp. I'm telling you from but... experience, okay? <laughs> Oh, all right. Um, tell, yeah. tell us, Tony. Tell, tell no, us, Tony. Where did the cheerleader hurt you? <laughs> where did the cheerleader hurt you? Touch you? I yeah. can't. <laughs> it's everywhere. Mm. Oh. Pom poms everywhere. Yeah, and you know, you know, I'll tell you, my um, my buddy Kyle had involved the rest of us in creating this new world. We're playing in the um. D shift seven D um, system that we're playing in, uh, we blew up the Forgotten Realms. Okay, but then we all started randomly selecting tiles and we're building this world. Um, we all created like a mythos related to our characters that we were playing in the previous world. And he's tying it in and all that stuff, and now we're like we're like invested in this world, and, and, and it's what, it's pretty you, cool, I must say. What do you what do you call it? The remembered worlds? What's that? <laughs> what, what do you call uh, the setting now? <laughs> the remembered worlds? Oh, no, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're having, we're having fun with yeah, it. But anyways, I, but I found my keys realm. Is what it is. Yeah, but 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 um, but he, but but we were involved in that process as we were building it up, and now we're playing it characters in there and it doesn't matter whether we're rolling 3d6 in order <laughs> get what you get and you don't throw a fit and you know i'm rolling ones on my hit points and whatever every level and i'm still alive but still right but i'm not but i'm not oh, but it's enjoyable <laughs> okay <laughs> well, i'm sorry yep. <clears throat> yeah 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 all right so our first uh, step here um Tony, you want to kick this off with our first step? or? Oh, my gosh. All right. So um, <laughs> choosing tropes and themes. Step one. Oh. Uh, once you've spent a few minutes uh, brainstorming, storming, storming, it's time to pick the trope and tropes that you want to see appear in your setting. Um, we're going to roll those. We're going to roll randomly. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we going to roll two and keep one, everybody? No, I'm going to roll two and keep two. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do for me. I'm just going to roll two. I'm going to keep the two I roll. I'm, I'm going to get what I get. I'm not going to throw a fit. Well, first you got to know what you're rolling. So first of all, what is a trope? Yeah. A trope is a common storytelling device, a cliche, or both. Um, they can help define a genre, like steampunk or alternate history. Or they can define the morality of good versus evil. Tropes uh, can be refined in all the way down to specific elements within classic stories. Noir. Mm -hmm. Um, But you should stay more general when developing a setting. Tropes help you give your setting an easily recognizable element for your players to identify with. If you say your setting has gritty realism trope, this helps your players know what kind of game they're getting into. Uh, it informs them what kind of characters they need to build. Uh, if you make a, a cartoon talking squirrel in my realism campaign, I'm going to mm-hmm. kill it. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> your, your setting doesn't have to, Could be a great squirrel. have to have a trope. It says that here. It doesn't right. have to have one. Um, you can skip this step, and step entirely and just hodgepodge it as you go. Um, yeah. But there's a list of common tropes here. Now, there's another little section here that I want to talk about with tropes, and then I'll let one of you cover themes. Um, And that is subverting tropes. And that's something that we've done in one of the ones that we did, uh, where we wanted to have a traveling structure that Mm -hmm. moves through you know, we were oh, traveling through time. No, it's traveling through reality, reality to different yeah. worlds. And that was instead of having a spaceship that jumps from place to place, we had a bar that jumps yeah. from place to place. 
So we took that trope of travel and exploration and we turned it on its head. We subverted it a little bit. We did. Give it a twist. This involves taking the expectations of a trope that it brings along with it and deliberately doing something different with it. Uh, For example, they list here in the book, instead of robots created and controlled by humans, playing Maybe PCs play humans recreated by an advanced artificial species of beings in a bid to study the long extinct society. Oh, that's creepy. All right. Yeah. Uh, or perhaps your setting employs a trope of gritty realism, but the player characters are idealistic hero- heroes in a gritty set. So uh, okay. that is just uh, one way to kind of twist and turn or subvert the tropes. Right. What about themes, Holmes? Themes, well, they are similar to tropes. But here it says they speak to the types of stories you want to feature. Um, themes are, are, are more of your broad ideas and questions um, that you ask yourselves that are... Um, you know, that are kind of tied to conditions or emotions. Like what does it mean to be a human in this world where um, like, say, here's an example, like what it might mean to be a human in a world where intelligent empathic beings can be created artificially. Ooh, that's interesting. So that's a, would be a theme there. Um, And another one that says, likewise, a theme in the twilight Imperium Imperium setting. Ha ha coming up here soon i hope we hope um what is it like to live in the shadow of a great forgotten civilization and can you ever live up to its lost ideals so it's um it's a, it's a it's a it, themes are a good way to like you know put a question to your players mm-hmm. to have them answer it through their characters voice using their character's voice and i could get them tied into it um to, to kind of tie them to the setting right away um it could be something broad like um also like what kind of legacy will my character leave after they die um those kinds of things so um yeah so that's what themes are okay that's right. Right. So we're going to roll this up uh, on table 1.4-1 on page 43 of the book. Um, right. since, uh, since it's Stefan's turn, buddy, you get to kick it off. Go ahead. Uh, what your what first method are you trope. using, bud? Yeah, what are you going to do? I'm going to be using the uh, roll three, keep two. Okay. Not because I just give me some options. If I, uh, if I don't like one, I can maybe kick it off. Cool. If I like all three, maybe I'll keep them. You never know. Sweet. All right. So let's start with first roll. 48. Magic. All righty. So, okay, I have a question for you guys. Mm -hmm. If we roll something that one of the other two guys roll, do we Uh, re-roll? Dealer's choice. Yeah, we can do one or the other. Okay, I think it might be. I think it's going to be random enough where it really doesn't matter. We might have one or two overlap. I think we'll be all right. All right, Sounds do you want to good. roll all three of yours there, Stefan, or do we yep, want to yep, yep. round robin oh. it? Okay, go for oh, it. Oh, okay, go. What do you got? So you got then you got magic. Got magic. Then I've got sixty-six. Yeah. Four, six. New frontiers. Okay, new frontiers of magic. Let me so add that. Says, the setting takes place at the edge of civilization and beyond, whether in space, the deep ocean, or a new dimension. Ooh. That could be possible. New dimensions of magic and stuff. Portals. We'll see. And, 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 and what it says for magic here says magic is an element Wait. in the setting, and the acquisition of magic is the goal of most major characters. Yeah. That's a good look. That could be interesting and to you. So those well. are your two, and then you want to roll a third one and then pick two between the three, right? Maybe, yeah. 76. Okay. 76. Okay. Go a little further down at gritty realism. So this in this setting has a prevalent gr- theme of gritty realism. Things go wrong for the major characters. Villains sometimes win. People act out of self-interest, and decisions can be motivated 
by misinformation, bias, fear, and irrational hatred. I think I think I like all three of them. I'm going to keep them. <laughs> okay, is there any of them that you're thinking you might subvert at this time? Uh, let's see. Not at this time, but I'm not, I don't want to lock myself into either. Like magic could be, depending on what the other things will be on the tables further on. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll subvert them. You know, if it's magic in a in a high technology world, uh, we'll see. You know, it might might be a little different than a a medieval type world. Gotcha. Right on. So that's right. my well, that's my three. Those are your three. So you had magic. Yep. You had new frontier, mm-hmm. and you had gritty realism. All right. So Tony, what method are you using here for your random? So I'm going to roll three. Uh, but I'm going to intentionally subvert one. Okay. Um, Sounds good. I don't know which one yet. I'll choose that after I roll my three. Okay. So first one I rolled is 82 superheroes. Oh. In this setting, a special group of individuals who possess superhuman powers and abilities exist. These individuals have taken it upon themselves to protect and guide society, either openly or from the shadows. They fight against similarly powered villains whose goals are usually nefarious. Costumes, capes, and secret identities are highly recommended. Awesome. That is interesting. You would have to roll superheroes, too. (laughs) Right on. All right. Uh, 23. What's that? Dungeons. So, oh, superheroes in dungeons. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> These locations range from real-world dungeons to the tombs, caverns, and evil lairs of hack-and-slash adventures. All right. I'm, I'm starting. I'm starting to... The juices are flowing. This is automatically getting the juices flowing here. Mm, it is. And it? last but not least, 99. Underwater. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Underwater dungeons and superheroes. <laughs> So significant aspects of setting underwater, whether cultures, civilizations, or entire worlds. So what I'm thinking mm-hmm. is looking at this, I like the underwater environments. Now I've got two environments in my tropes. You so do, one yeah. of them, one of them I'm going to subvert and that's going to okay. be the dungeons. Okay. So, um, I like the fact of having underwater superheroes. So it's going to be a water world, probably. Um, mm. But uh, I like the idea of the now dungeon subverting that. I have to figure out a way to subvert that in some way. And that I have to do yet. I'll, I think I'll wait for my tech level and a couple other things. So dungeons are going to be the ones you're thinking of sub- subverting. Okay. Yes. So All right. in this case, and then I'm putting that into my show notes or into my notes now. So go ahead. Okay. Um, What's your method, homie? I'm going to make it fairly difficult on myself. Not difficult, but I'm going to make it. I'm going to say I'm going to get what I get and I don't throw a fit. I'm going to roll two. I'm going to keep the first one. I'm going to subvert the second one, regardless of what I roll. Okay? All right. All right. First one. 83. Uh Uh-oh, I think I got superheroes, too. Yep. Hmm. All right. It's what I'm gonna do. All right. Well, sometimes when I I don't like a roll, I'm not sure. I I inverse the numbers of the of the dice, so maybe 38, and see what that gives me. Historical aesthetics. As, uh, aesthetics. Right, yeah. Aesthetics. I mean, aesthetics. Aesthetics. <laughs> Yes, there could be athletics involved, but it, athletics. It well, you know what? Since you have superheroes, Tony, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do what you did there, Stefan. I'm gonna reverse it. Historical aesthetics. So honestly, you kept what you rolled. You just read it yeah. differently. I yeah, yeah I, I did. Yeah, I, so this right. setting is draped in classical history. The look and feel much like a period piece. Yeah. Some examples I like include it, actually. Victorian England, the Cold War, the 1970s. Oh. Yeah, groovy, baby. Or medieval yeah. times. <laughs> Thou art suck. groovy, milady. This doesn't <laughs> suck. All right. Medieval medieval 70s. Yeah. <laughs> Thou art. Everybody's walking around dressed as knights with 
bell bottoms under our yeah. <laughs> but, but that's not the one I'm subverting, though. This no, is the one right. I'm subverting. <laughs> oh, no, darn. <laughs> all right. I'm subverting it for you. <laughs> Ta- tie-dyed freaking oh. taverns. Yeah. I am subverting 81, which is steampunk. Ooh. Oh. He can work well with the uh, historical aesthetic. It yeah. could. A pseudoscience fiction setting in which advanced technology is replaced with monstrous steam-powered equivalents with a Victorian England aesthetic. Mm. Well, it seems like I have my... I, But I don't. Okay? Yeah, you want, you want to subvert that I one. don't have them subverting it, so it's not going to be Victorian England. It's going yeah. to be... Could be almost anything. It could be. What it's going to be uh, the Cold War era. Mm. Steampunk in the Cold War era. We're talking. Mm. We're talking. Our yeah, so the Cold War era. We're talking. We're talking United States versus Russia. Russia in the sixties. In the fifties, fifties and sixties. Okay, just after post World War Two, Korea. <laughs> Um, Vietnam War area, 50s and 60s, um, but steampunk. Right. So maybe uh, what what if uh, yeah, Germany had was developing steampunk technology instead of the V2 rocket and stuff like that? And yes. It kept, it kept going from there. You know, so Tesla and stuff like that might be uh, mm-hmm. the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Technology went. Maybe, maybe that. Maybe, maybe it's one of those things where, um, you know, I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking of that show. I don't know if you guys watched it or not, but it was uh, Man in a High Castle, where, mm-hmm. where Germany and Japan won. Maybe yep. it's the steampunk technology that made them win. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. A little, okay. a little different. Yep. A little bit. <laughs> okay, that's, that's with, with Max. With with Max. With Max. <laughs> Bug shaped mechs. Yeah. Oh gosh, okay. you and your bugs. Yeah, you know it. Okay, so do you guys have you guys well, um since we're in tropes and themes, is there a theme, is there a question that comes up for you? Yeah, so I had one that kind of came up for me, and that was um when I was thinking about, you know, underwater and dungeons both have an an era or sorry an aura of like exploration and i think so one of the themes i'm gonna have it's gonna be kind of an exploration type game uh and the people who are chosen as explorers by their respective society are chosen because they developed powers so they're the chosen explorers that adventure in this exploration of the underwater or dungeons or whatever or both um um are going to be heroic explorers superheroes people who develop powers so so my theme is going to be exploration that's one of them okay and then of course when you have heroes um the other theme that comes to mind is that uh, good versus evil, strong good versus evil, because uh, mm-hmm. you you know you've got here superheroes and super villains, so that'll probably be another theme that I'll throw in there. But that one's still kind of iffy. Okay. How about you, How Steph? about you, Stefan? Did you have something that? I was looking at the tropes that I've got and trying to work them together, and I think something. Okay, it is there's gritty realism in the world, but most of the adventures happen in these new frontiers. And in the new frontiers, this is where people acquire the magic. It's where the sources of magic seem to uh, to be most potent, almost like mining for gold. Like It's a precious resource. And some people will do almost anything to, to get it. That's why it's gritty. They might you know, uh, betray loved ones, uh, lie, cheat, cheat and steal, backstab. Uh, and since it's a new frontier, it's lawless. So gotcha. maybe, maybe, uh, you know, are you going to, do you try to be someone honorable uh, in this kind of world or try to uh, 
to keep a bit of semblance of order? Or are you selfish? Um, I don't know exactly how to put that into words uh, with with the elements maybe of uh, you know, how far are you willing to go, you know, to gain to gain magic, this magic resource. That's a great. That is a great question. Mm. How far are you willing to go mm. to gain magic? Yeah, in, in to discover to discover in, new magic. In one word, maybe integrity would be. Real. We'll be able to sum it up and then cool. yeah, how how yeah. how far are you willing to go or what are you willing to do? Stuff like that. So yeah, in, the word yep. integrity definitely works in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm getting a little thing. bit more of mm -hmm. my of my thoughts, Chris, but I want to hear some of yours. Um because you've been kind of I'm, I'm thinking so I'm thinking it's a Cold War era, right? Um, I'm thinking the words, um, rebellion, oppression, resistance. <laughs> Viva resistance. Re re live the re Viva la resistance is coming to mind here, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking like black market, um, smuggling um, to survive um, and the question almost along those lines there Stefan um, what the question that I'm coming up with what are you willing to do yeah. for your family you know, like to have them survive those kinds of things. So it could be, though I don't know if I want to go be, make it like that real because mm -hmm. I still want it to be like a, you know, a fun setting, you know, to like, um, what are you willing to do to survive? Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. that. Or if you want a bit more lighthearted, like Cold War in the 50s, 60s with a uh, Austin Powers vibe. No, <laughs> not that. No, no, right. no, not not so much, not <laughs> no, so right. much. I, right. I, 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 almost not. Well, you can always come I mean, back. Though I didn't, though, though I didn't roll like the gritty realism, but almost kind of, I almost kind of want to go a little dark. Yeah, kind of want to go a little dark. Still serious. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can always re come back yeah, to. We the can always come back to have, uh, themes that I am subverting by this setting. Um, Austin Powers. Uh, <laughs> themed um silliness <laughs> though i love the movies trust me yeah <laughs> that's good kind of things all right sweet okay i've decided i'm just um uh, so i had this theme that i'm gonna uh, one of my two themes that i had um i decided i'm gonna subvert the good versus evil theme and it's going to be evil versus good so the players are actually part of an evil society oh and okay. uh, the good, uh, so to speak, uh, aspect of it is: do they choose to be, you know, do they choose to be selfish and evil like the people around them, or do they choose to be uh, good? It's more of an internal conflict. Do they choose to be good and do use their powers for good, where in a society where things aren't exactly um, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff is frowned upon. Uh, you're using your powers to help other people? What? No. <laughs> All right. So there that's uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think if I'm subverting this, a trope would be maybe the magic a little bit, and where magic is, like I said, a limited resource. Once you've nice. used, whether it's crystals, whether it's you know flowers, what I'm just throwing ideas. Mm -hmm. Once you've used it up, you know and you, uh, it can't come back or not easily. Maybe that's why the new frontier exists. Like you know, we're trying to, you know, me. cut down the cut down the new forest to uh, to gain some more magic kind of thing or mine mine it whatever it is. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I think we've got some good themes and tropes here to start with for our um, hodgepodges. Yeah. Shall we move on to the next step of our prep? Yes, and we can. Not. All right. That's step two. The uh, technology level, selecting a technology level for your setting. Now, uh, it says here the technology levels range from historical to the fanciful. Uh, most settings have a primary technology level that applies to most, if not all, of the setting. Uh, some settings may have multiple levels of technology, and that's one thing we covered in our uh, Epsilon Eclipse game is multiple levels of technology uh, and meshing those together. And I think Keyforge did that really well, too, um, meshing those things together. Um, they've provided a list here on table one for one dot four dash two the technology levels and it, it's a pretty comprehensive list um there's a couple of bits here you guys want to take one each and talk about them oh yeah Let's go see. ahead so so the first bit is what they're they call the pre-modern technology right um when you're trying to figure out what technology level to use, um, pre-modern technology is a, using real-world history, they say, is a good place to start. So if um, even if you have magic or supernatural powers in your setting, um, layer layering those on top of a setting with some sort of historical basis could be interesting. You know, in the real world, it says historical technology eras span anywhere from millions of years to decades. Um, and then uh, shorter, typically becoming shorter, closer to modern times. So, um, yeah. So that's the pre-modern technology level. Okay. You know what's the other one? Yeah. And the next one, then we move more towards the future with fictional technology. So, they, of course, real-world history doesn't help much there when you're trying to come up with futuristic technology levels. Uh, yeah, because as you get beyond modern-day eras, you need to create your own tech levels, which the table 1.4-2 helps with for more suggestions uh, based on some of the more popular tech levels in science fiction and other speculative fiction. You can use them as they are or expand upon them. Uh, create your own as well, uh, and and it says uh, also although we discuss futuristic technology eras from the perspective of humanity, you can replace that of course with the perspective of another species and how they would use technology. Sometimes I like to see like you know how they they talk about how it's hard to imagine future technologies. I like to think of uh, some futuristic films that have been redone a few years or maybe a decade later like uh, uh total recall total recall with schwarzenegger they have you know self-driving cars they had like computer screens in and in, in subway cars and stuff like johnny that. cab technology yeah <laughs> but you, even the monitors look really thick you know like mm -hmm. standard big monitors that crts use them. yeah yeah Compared to the new version where people have flat screens and the holograms all over the place, uh, yeah. cell phones are very common. So things that back then they couldn't even imagine wireless technology like that. But now it's like we can imagine a bit more, but you can still push it. And maybe in another 10 years, they can redo Total Recall another different way with more technology, uh, even more advanced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true, uh, true story here, a little sidebar, uh, not related, but it you bring it up, Johnny Cab made me think of this. Um, mm -hmm. And it also is kind of world building. Uh, so uh, you guys ever play Traveler? Never have seen okay. it on the shelves, obviously. I've right. read a bit. Palladium, right? Yeah. That Palladium? No. Uh, no. No. Um, yeah, I can't remember who makes it. But, Chaos? Um, yeah, could, I remember. Could be. But uh, I, at one point... Um, my GM back in high school, the guy that ran cyberpunk for me all the time, my buddy, Mike, um, he decided he was going to run traveler for us. And we, um, 
but he was running it in his own world. Mm -hmm. Uh, His world creation was Johnny World, where it took that Johnny Cab concept (laughs) and took it, cranked it to eleven, took it to the yeah, dialed it to eleven. Everything (laughs) was, you know, welcome to Johnny Johnny Toilet. Welcome to Johnny (laughs) Toilet. Please insert fifteen cents. (laughs) <laughs> or else you can't go, <laughs> you know. So uh, it was literally that the whole no. setting was Johnny World, <laughs> and, it was and, awesome. the, and the original traveler was Game Designers Workshop. That's right, GDW. That's yeah. okay. Um, All right, but yeah, it was awesome. just <laughs> yeah. talking about subverting a trope, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he took that that one little concept from uh, Total Recall and he ran with it, and it was. It was a one shot, and it was hilarious fun. And yes, one of us had a character die in character creation. Um, <laughs> like you do. Uh, <laughs> um, like you do. That is <laughs> and uh, but we had a lot of fun with it. So, but anyhow, uh, nice. I will roll first. All right, go for on it. On this table of technology levels. So, uh, and that is going to be a thirty-seven. 37 Renaissance. Mm-hmm. This age featured a revival of classic learning brought to significant developments in science, art, architecture, religion, political ideals, ideas in Europe. Gunpowder spread through. Okay, so I <laughs> like that. That's interesting. So, um, Good luck but, using gunpowder on the water, but anyway. <laughs> No, well, but if you think about it, it's the, I mean, if I mean, gunpowder aside, the rest of it though, there's a yeah. renaissance in this world where the science, the art, the architecture, religion, all that is. The is, feudal system um, of government began to vanish, yeah. and was yeah. replaced by more proto-modern governmental organizations. It was the birth of many parliaments, mm-hmm. uh, and you saw, it, and and because I'm subverting the evil and good trope. Perhaps that's why, you know, so that's Maybe why, this, because there's this no. political change mm-hmm. in my societies. Now, I had already written a note because I thought I just had a thought and I told you I was thinking more on it. Um, and that was the underwater aspect of it. I'm going to make all of my archetypes for my setting. Um, shark people. <laughs> I was going to say shark or octopus. <laughs> uh, all my archetypes will be different breeds of shark. Nice. Oh, well, they talk with a Boston accent. <laughs> like no. like Jabberjaw. No, Do they, they have won't to all talk be like that. <laughs> Fish are friends, not food. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, but I, I – so sharks. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and in that time period – yeah. Well, and, and that, you look at this, the political ideas, level. the political ideas, that stuff's flipping, you know, that gets you the, the good and evil. Yeah. Well, that's it. And since it's so all sharks, you can get, right. you can, things huh. are changing. It, they're, 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 they're adapting to new schools of thought. Oh, my God. Oh, there wow. it is. There it is, Stefan. <laughs> well, with that said, go ahead, Stefan, go ahead and roll your technology level. Because all right. I have one in my trope. It does say steampunk. That kind of mm-hmm. sets my technology level, but I still want to roll on this table. Okay, so <laughs> I will roll and get a 27 to get classical antiquity. So this age covered the cultural history of the societies of several thousand years ago around the Mediterranean Sea, including ancient Greeks, Persians, and Roman societies. It saw the continued development of established city-states, professional militaries, new forms of government, and several major empires. Ooh, that's cool. Awesome. Imagine the Roman Empire needing more resources and expanding into these new frontiers for the magic to keep going, and uh, keep their empire mm-hmm. thriving and, and going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could be pretty cool. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so I'm going to roll. What do I have here? <laughs> 17. Iron Age. Ooh. <laughs> Iron Steampunk Age. 
The age began with the development of iron weapons and implements, widespread writing and economic systems, enabling more complex forms of government and society. Art styles developed further. Some settlements became fortified as warfare evolved, and some cultures began fighting on horseback with chariots. Okay, (laughs) this is what I'm going to do. The steampunk part of it is that was how far technology got in this world when they blew themselves up because you know what that fucking cold war happened they blew themselves up and now this new world has come up and now they're in the iron age and these steampunk things are being found oh nice okay very good So yours is actually more post-apocalyptic then. It's, I'm, yeah, it's, okay. Post-steampunk apocalyptic. You see what what I'm thinking here? You see what I'm saying with that? Yeah, it's. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And and maybe, you know what, I think, you know, maybe it's, um, maybe it's one of those things. So let's see. So back here draped in a classical historical look. So I, I said it's like a Cold War. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. All right. Yep. These devices are being found and are are kind of maybe tipping the power. Maybe there's two powers. So, so I still want to go with that Cold War trope, right? Basically two powers in this world, in an Iron Age world, right? fighting over each other but these um steampunk devices are being found and potentially being activated and maybe tipping power and you know what i mean i don't know could make it interesting definitely all right cool so we're that's our step so, two. Those are our you know, Stefan said something when he was talking about the you know the gunpowder not working underwater, but that's a part of it that I can subvert. And instead of uh, using gunpowder to, they have guns, but they use batteries instead of uh, gunpowder. And those batteries are limited resources. Um, and uh, you know that gives you your. I'm six sorry. Shooters. Why wouldn't gunpowder work underwater? Could be a different type of powder, or uh, why would well, it even it, have to it, get wet? It it generally, it generally uh, doesn't work when it's wet. Right. So why would your gum powder really care whether it's wet or not? I can Maybe make there's it that a way, but I this gave me a thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why are you attacking me? I feel attacked. I, no, I don't know. <laughs> Am I triggering you, Tony? No. <laughs> yeah, you triggered So my you're guns. thinking batteries. So you're yeah, thinking battery gunpowder powder batteries. batteries. Yeah, gunpowder batteries. They're, they're, they're encased uh, to protect the powder. Um, and those will ignite and send pro- projectiles uh, torpedoing through water. Um, uh, you know, that or, or, or. gives... Like, for instance, like the battery just initializes the spark to whatever projectile then maybe. Mm-hmm. propels through the water. Yeah, you know? maybe instead of gunpowder, like that's mine, it's a, it's a type of coral. Eh, well, no, uh, I don't know. I'm whatever. Just thinking, spitballing here. Well, you know, yeah. but the thing is, no, but it says gunpowder spread throughout Europe from China. Maybe it's, it's not necessarily gunpowder. Maybe there is this technology for weapons or maybe a superpower technology has been spreading across nope. in the I same like kind the, of way. I like the batteries. I, I just want them to be yeah. some sort of uh, some, it seems to work on some form of electricity. Because right. um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, electricity will conduct better underwater. So you would think instead Absolutely. of developing something that uses a spark yep. to pro, uh, project um, these will, you know, pr- pr- more battery oriented in that it'll be um, an electrical technology right, as opposed right. to a chemical. 
Um, so that's you all. Light, that's all I was thinking. You, you, you're just lighting those oxygen atoms in H2O, man. Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. No, the hydrogen. <laughs> Agitates hydrogen is what it does. That too. Know, to me. Absolutely. <laughs> just always damn science out of my freaking role playing game. <laughs> I think a cat girl just died. <clears throat> right? Isn't that that's the thing, right? Once you start talking physics and role playing games, a cat girl dies. Yeah. <laughs> that's it <a> true. <laughs> Somewhere in the world. <laughs> Okay, right. so we have um, worlds. <laughs> I think we we all pretty much have um, moving into step three. Mm-hmm. We all pretty have pretty much have an idea which one of these ways we're going to go here. But I would like to um, to just kind of discuss it. Let's do um, it. So what the physical world does in your setting? Ex- what physical world does your s- setting exist in? Is it natural or artificial environment the characters uh, deal with every day um, that affects adventure and story construction? Um, The question you ask yourself is one or many. Is it one world or many worlds? Um, Mm -hmm. And particularly in a lot of science fiction settings, the ability to visit multiple worlds is a thing. Um, So... This help. This step discusses the rules for building a single planet. However, your setting can be much larger, or uh, or much smaller than one world. If you want your setting to consist of multiple worlds, you can use these rules to build several different planets. Likewise, if you want your setting to be smaller, such as a single continent on a much larger world, you can narrow your focus. Use this step for development. For developing that content, continent only. Jeez, Tony, talk. Um, so, uh, who wants to read the next part? Go ahead, Steph. Uh, the many worlds. See. See. All right. Yeah. So many worlds. Uh, keep it simple. So, if you're using these rules to develop multiple planets uh, to populate the sectors of space. They suggest uh, keeping it fairly simple. Um, so using the tables, uh, table one, four, dash three, and dash four to determine planet size and general climate, and then the environment as well to apply it to, in, to the entire world. We've seen a series of movies uh, that, that do this uh, that are fairly popular. Um, and uh, so you've got the ice planet, the desert planets, the jungle worlds, uh, the lava right. covered yeah. Uh, world. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the gangster planet. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they want a wanga? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Sometimes it makes each planet much more distinctive, unique, you know, uh, easy to identify for that instead of you know, building every world like Earth. You know, small blue, green, and planetoidy. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that's one of the main things. And then other inhabitants and oddities, you should either apply the result to the entire planet or noted as the world's most distinguishing uh, feature. Okay. What's next? What's the uh, What's the other one, uh, Tony? No, I'll let homie read it. Okay. Right. Well, the other one is a single region, and then it says to get elaborate on it. So, if you're using these rules to develop a single region on a world, you'll probably want to default the world to the Earth-like planet result on your on on the on table four dash three um and then um what you'll do is then um in addition when rolling on the climate you'll you could just select the climate for that continent and not just the rest of the world so um you'll be selecting a single region then once you get into determine the environments population other inhabitants and oddities makes more sense to divide your setting in a number of these regions, then make different choices for each. 
And then since you're focusing on a single part of the world, you can have plenty of time to make different parts of each region feel varied and, and interesting that way. So um, you could pick, you know, maybe you have a Earth-like planet where you have like more of like a Western hemisphere and, you know, an and Eastern hemisphere. And then maybe you have like an Antarctic area too, um, for instance, or maybe you have that water ocean area is one of the regions especially um so that's up to up to you to do that so then we get into designing the planet itself right. yeah so that's the broke so there's lots of different bits to that and they've mm -hmm. broken it up into different tables mm -hmm. with a little blurb for each one um right. but i want to mention because you talked about the mono environment um versus the biosphere a little bit you br briefly touched on that so i want to mention the sidebar on page 47 yeah um which despite what you see in many films and books most worlds do not have a single environment from no. pole to pole <laughs> most have a variety of environments just like earth does so why are so many mono environment worlds such a staple and here's a few reasons why number one worlds with a single environment are distinctives when you say dune everybody right. thinks desert planet yeah. when you think hoth everybody's digging out their cold weather gear yeah, yeah. you are um and you know uh there's and that, up and that goodbye it's bug spray if you're watching there's kevin a, costner and water world yeah you know exactly. you're getting all your flippers right and water right on <laughs> Uh, Better have some world, fucking water wings, man. If you live in water world and you don't know how to <laughs> swim, you'd be fucked. That suck. <laughs> yeah. So worlds, worlds with a single environment are easy. They're, it's very easy world building. You don't have to spend a ton of time doing it. Um, yep. And then worlds with a single environment are seem exotic, and that you want it. You know the in those settings where you have multiple worlds where you have um that's a way to make them exotically unique so that they'll stand out and seem alien because we know that's not how earth is no so <laughs> that's right all right well gentlemen let's begin right. yeah. i'm going to start by cheating um yep. and uh <laughs> because my world is underwater so world structure so it's going to be a desert world or no it's going to be earth like okay. in size i'm just going to go ahead and keep it earth like okay um in size and scope right so i'm just going to choose option 3 earth like planet this this world matches our own in size and mass even has one or two large moons that create tides uh and you can use earth as a template when creating this world so that's where well, there you go cool excellent all right i too chris you're on error um yeah Next. well you know what i'm gonna randomly roll for my world structure because i don't know you know what i'm not going with earth i mean i know i I'm, i know i have that cold war theme and steampunk but it's not necessarily an alternate earth history like i thought it was gonna be no it's not it's going to be a 10 artificial construction. Holy crap, dude. This totally throws this shit on my head. <laughs> okay. Artificial construction. This planet is some sort of fantastic artificial structure. It may be a huge ring that spins for gravity and maintains a biosphere on the inner edge a gigantic Dyson sphere with civilization on the inside or on the outside or something stranger like a disc, a pocket dimension or a construction that completely defies the laws of physics or one big fucking steampunk world. It's a no, steampunk I... world. It's a fucking steampunk planet. Yeah. <laughs> the whole planet is steampunk. It's, it's a gear planet. It is. That's that's <laughs> it. The fantastic art of artificial construction structure of the world is its steampunk. Nice. 
<laughs> I mean, wow. Awesome. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. I don't know what Ooh, I'm going to do with it, but whatever. You know what that makes me think of? What's well, that? The realm of mechanics. Me- mechanus. Mechan- mechanus. Okay. From uh, yeah. D&D. D yep. shift oh, 7D yeah. uh, cosmology. Yeah. Nice. So, Going to populate it with Modrons. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, Stefan, um, what you got, buddy? All right, let's. I'll go random too and see if uh, see what I get. All right, I got a ten two, but I'll re-roll that because you know, uh, homie already got one, got that. And I told, totally got the opposite. A one. It's a mere moon. It's a small <laughs> world. That's no moon. Well, <laughs> you know, you could have gone with ten. And that it was completely, your planet is completely created out of magic. Could right? be. Isn't magic a thing? Yeah, it could be. Right. But I don't, the world is small enough to be a satellite of a much larger world that dominates the skies. <laughs> this larger awesome. world is likely, likely a gas giant, but could be a solid planet. Characters add a boost die to checks they perform on this world that may involve physical activity. Or maybe low, oh, low, are you, low okay. gravity. Okay, all right, everybody. Yeah. What, 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 do you know what, what, what planet Stefan just created, right? <laughs> Every get, everybody gets a fucking boost eye when they do anything. Yeah. The boost eye physical. planet. <laughs> it's the boost eye planet. They get a fucking boost eye if they do anything physical. <laughs> the planet of boost. <laughs> Booster world! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's a shit. small blue planet, small blue moon, <laughs> made of blue cheese. <laughs> oh, uh, very, nice, very nice, very so nice. Is it a, is it is it a cube shaped moon? Uh, maybe, maybe from up from far far away it looks like a cube. From up close, it's hard to tell. <laughs> All right, that's Coolio, dude. So let's see. So All right, so moving right. on to climate. So climate. So, yeah, see. once you settle on a structure for your world, think about its climate. Uh, yeah. and, and that's the primary climate. Mm-hmm. So um, let's roll. Homie, you want to kick it off? I am. Climate. This is on page 47. Now, there's not a lot of options. All right. No. I picked three. It's a hot world. Ooh, that makes hot sense. Beers. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, machines are always great. Freaking machines, you know, steampunk. Yeah, and steam. Hot world. <laughs> People walking around with their pores wide open. Jeez. I have the set the setback die planet. So because <laughs> yeah. of the heat, yeah. it's the setback die because of the heat outside. Most of the world tends towards the hotter than average climate, still some regions may be temperate or cool. This world is more likely to have deserts, savannas, plains, lush jungles, and tropical biomes. Mm. Creatures add setback diet any checks they perform outside because of the heat. It's because <laughs> the heat generated from the planet. It's a steam yeah. operated planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking hot planet. You live <laughs> on a goddamn oven. Mm-hmm. Cooking steam. <laughs> it's a sauna. It's sauna world. <laughs> sauna world. Your whole planet's made of copper. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Copper and brass. Uh, all right, you, Stavin. How about you? All right. Uh, me. Let's see. Climax. Uh, number six. Number six. A temperate world. So, no. No extremes. Temperate world sees a wide range of temperatures across its surface, but most regions tend to be comfortable for human life. This world, this world is likely to have a wide range of biomes ranging from tropical to the Arctic, which is fine by me. Excellent. Very nice. All right. I am rolling, and I got an eight. A cold world. Well, that's uh-huh. a surprise, and you're in the fucking water, dude. <laughs> this yeah. world tends toward colder than average climates, while the, and and I and it makes my choice of shark people much better. Yeah. Um, okay. You have while a few regions and microclimes can be temperate or even hot, most of the planet is cool or cold. 
the world is more likely to have alpine meadows, coniferous and hardy deciduous forests, taiga tundra, cold seas and oceans. Characters yep. add a setback die to any checks to perform. Uh, they perform outside because of the cold. You know, uh, it would have been great if you would have picked one and you had lobster people as your main thing. <laughs> like everybody's in. <laughs> we live in a. On a hot, we live, on a hot we world. live in a fucking pot on a stove. <laughs> oh, wait a second. That would be on my planet. <laughs> yeah, that's your planet. Yeah. Crab people. Crab people. The right. hot the crab, crab people. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a cold world. So. Great. Cold, but Earth like. So okay. that's cool. All righty then. Okay. Um, Let's see. So then the next thing we have. So those were our climates. Now we have to go into the environments. Um, you can roll to generate environments for your world or choose environments you feel are the most appropriate. Um, so these would be things like your, you know, your wastelands, your forests, plains, mountains, swamps, river valley, or whatever. This would be the, my whole, you know, my whole planet is an ocean, like Tony might pick number yeah. eight specifically. Yeah. I will pick that. That'll be one of them. Yeah. Gotcha. But I will roll a couple other just to just to see. Now with environments, you can have, you know, notable ones. You can have like two or three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick a single environment. It makes sense that somebody artificially created this planet and created just one environment. I'm thinking it makes yeah. it easier. Okay. So I'm going to randomly roll. Um, you know, I'll go first. I'll randomly roll this one. Let's see what we got here. Sure. Randomly right. roll. The environment is going to be a five mountains. Hot mountains. Yeah, hot mountains all over the place. So it's a mountainous well, it makes sense. Steampunk. I mean, <laughs> yeah. fucking rocks and coal. Vents, whatever. Vents steam and lava. <laughs> the floor is lava everywhere. What are the three okay, so on so on this so on so I'm so I've got the Yeah, I know. Everybody's favorite game. <laughs> so in the setting worksheet here, right, the form fitable one, I'm seeing what are the three most notable features of this world? Mountains. Mountains. More mountains. <laughs> no, I mean, because you, you're going to have other inhabitants and oddities that you can fill in there also. Both oh, true, 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 true. But we have mountains. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Stefan, what you yes. got? Buddy? All right. I'm going to roll for two of them. Uh, since I've got one of my themes is on the frontier. So I'll have the home empire or home base or and the frontier area. Mm -hmm. And so the first one for the home empire location is three is a forest. Okay. So the home oh, empire is going to be is the forest. mainly forested. Okay. Yeah. Element common to all forests, large number of trees. Well, duh. <laughs> Beyond that, a forest can be tropical, uh, deciduous, or pine. You could even have oversized mushrooms, gigantic creeper vines, and stranger plants. So that's that. I'll work out on exactly how, but at least <laughs> we can see vines. the forest. Yeah, we can definitely see the forest for the trees. I see you. And the frontier is four plains. Oh. So grasslands, savannas, scrubland, plateaus. Other expanses, so that's where the frontier is spaced. Plants tend to be grasses or bushes with few trees to be found. So that's where the people on the frontier find themselves in that kind of environment. Gotcha. So that's where they try to find all this magic to... Uh, that's where the magic is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Out in the frontier? Yep, exactly. Because it's so open and so vast that's what makes it so freaking dangerous maybe. man yeah right maybe there's predators there's dangers cyclones oh, yeah. okay. we'll Go see Sweet. so i see two options on here that could create an underwater world so seeing that i'm gonna roll and i'm gonna choose um uh i'm just gonna roll a die and if i roll even it'll be oceans and if i roll odd 
it'll actually be really large lakes. Um, oh, actually, I see, I see four, five of them that you could use. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. So no, not um, doing river. I'm thinking number one. Um, number one, number ten, and maybe number five, underwater mountains and stuff. Nah, not underwater mountains. Number one, not uh, either ten. way. Uh, I rolled ocean, so I, it's straight up ocean. It's a uh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> makes sense. Uh, makes sense. Oceans. So this says for ocean, the region is a vast ocean or an ocean and the coastal regions alongside it. Most life is aquatic. Any inhabitants either live underwater um, or spend a lot of time underwater. In this case, a mine will be an ocean world with very little mad land mass. However, the land masses are these tremendous dungeons. Um, so that the land masses water. that are, are, yes, the land masses are going to be tremendous dungeons in this cold world, mm-hmm. um, that are that above are basically, water. that are basically the peaks of the mountains that are so tall that they're higher than the oceans. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very little land mass and the, the land mass is dungeons you know i must say i'm gonna read i'm gonna read number 10 we didn't roll it but it is interesting a landmark this region is dominated by a notable landmark such as a huge canyon an extensive cavern of caves a massive crater huge glaciers a towering mountain gorgeous ocean reefs or an active volcano then it says a roll on this table again re-rolling this result once you have determined an environment for this region pick a suitable landmark to put it in that's interesting. Hmm. I had created a um, kind of a homebrew world that had like a a great rift that just a big hole in the middle of this region, and we kind of adventured kind of all around it. <clears throat> and that'd be something if you were going to do like um, if you were dialing down to be like you said, dialing down to a specific region. Mm-hmm. That'd be a great one. You've got this landmark that determines what that region is, whether it's a, you know, it's a giant volcano that everyone yeah. worships, or it's a, a giant crater uh, that everyone lives yep. in. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. Right we what do we have next? Now, well, uh, you know, it says here you can map out your world, but yeah. yeah well, it says we'll regional that. populations next. Oh, Once you've okay. generated an envir- environment for region, so what does that say? Population. So, oh, it does say, yeah, it does have a general how populated your world is, I guess. Huh? Right on. So let's get into that. So what is, um, I guess I'll start with rolling first what? on population. Right. Um, and I could, I'm, I'm hoping I get the one I want. But we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got six, uh, which is small communities. Uh, the region has some small towns or hamlets and scattered homes and farms between. Population centers tend to be only a few hundred people at most. Um, so my populations are going to be pods. Yeah, schools and pods. <laughs> schools and pods. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And Good stuff. Just- and just to go back to my uh, my environment, I just thought of since the the frontier is on the plains, maybe make it uh, almost like a desert plain, very scrub like, uh, where you've got these cacti, cactuses, cacti, and it, there's one specific variety of cacti. That's where the magic lies. They have to find these, and they only grow there. Nice. That's is it is it agave? Uh, I'm not sure which kind of cactus. I'll have to do some more research. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> All right. For a population. Agave will... is a magical cactus. I mean, it makes tequila. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we'll see. Oh, I'm hungover. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll roll for both um, my home empire and the frontier like I did before. So for the home empire, it's, I got a four scattered individuals. Well, I don't think that makes much sense for an empire, unless it's on the decline. And it's in the it forest. It makes more so. sense for your frontier. Yeah, I think so. 
It actually I'll does. That, I'll, I'll keep that for my frontier. I think scattered individuals, okay. mostly uninhabited, few brave individuals do live here. They live in isolated farmsteads, hunting lodges, or simply in homes away from any major population centers. Mm -hmm. However, no towns or hamlets exist. So it there we really go. is a, a frontier, it's beginning. Yeah. Sounds good to me for the frontier. And the second one, a five. Five small communities. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to subvert it and maybe ignore it a little bit. Go with uh, with uh, a with cities or yeah, several small larger cities for the, the home empire. Gotcha. With maybe Excellent. one being maybe one being the capital. Excellent. Okay. Here we go. All right. So Don't you get homie. So the population of steampunk world is <laughs> <laughs> you fucking kid. Okay, yeah. Well, um, Megalopolis. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> holy crap! It's in all an Iron it's, Age. Oh, dude, you just city. made steampunk Coruscant. <laughs> I kind of did, didn't I? Jesus. Okay. Well, <laughs> population Megalopolis. Jeez. This is, we'll call it Gearasan. <laughs> Steampunkasan. The, the, the planet, no, the planet so of, says the, region? the planet of Jacuzzi. Okay, so basically, <laughs> Megalopolis, this region is completely urbanized into a single massive city with millions of inhabitants, little remains of the natural elements of this region, unless they are artificially preserved. If your technology level is the late industrial revolution or lower, consider re-rolling this result. I'm going to consider re-rolling it because my technology level is Iron Age. Right. <laughs> mm. Why not? Mm. Or, or maybe you should just... I'm leaving it. Throw that out. <laughs> or what? Throw what out? Throw out the Iron Age. People are act inhabiting the city, but they don't know freaking how to use anything. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting. Mm. And I'm okay, so I'm I want to say it. What's that? Right. Go ahead. I'm deciding whether I want to keep this or not. Yeah, but you can't do it with dead air. You got to decide. I can't do it. You're right. I can't do it with dead air. <laughs> That's true. I can't. Go ahead, Tony. Go ahead. What were we going to say? <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, then they go next, they go into mapping out your world. Once you have the general traits of your world figured out, you want to draw out a map. I like to let my players sometimes do that. Um, start by mapping the region they're in and then add things as they go. This is a great thing you can do in a session zero is um, set up the you set up your basic starting point and then let your players map something in the in the region around it when you're world building. Um, it's fun. Which reminds me of something, uh, Tony. I wanted to uh, mention it to you before. I just forgot it. We should put this in the show notes. Uh, I do have a link to a website that can generate maps for you and with all kinds of tweaks and settings that you can modify it for either a huge world with many, many different nations or one, one or two different nations that are really huge, blah, blah, blah. And have it look so uh, it's called Asgar uh, Map Generator. Cool. Nice. Asgar is yeah, fancy in, map in generator. I'll throw it in the show notes. In the no notes. In the no notes? The show notes. <laughs> the show notes, and I'll throw it in. Yep. Throw it in yeah. there. Okay. I've decided to keep the Megalopolis, and I have um, I have three words. Why? Thundar the Barbarian. <laughs> no <Nuff> said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Very nice. Very nice. I mean, I mean, think about think about this. You have Curasant, a mm. steampunk Curasant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think think think. Get that image in your head. Mm -hmm. Major war happened. Bzz, everybody's gone. They're now at this Iron Age level where they have technology. Everybody cooked. Level. Everybody cooked. <laughs> Very cooked. Yeah. Very cooked. They have everyone got, they have everyone got chariots. away. 
they have <laughs> they have they have buddy cooked off. Um, yeah, somebody didn't somebody didn't somebody forgot to like check the boiler or whatever the fuck, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and they all cooked away. Um, so now, hey, <laughs> in this steampunk Coruscant, people are riding through the streets in like horses and chariots, throwing spears and shit at each other. Okay. Sounds like a plan. That's it. <laughs> now, the last thing I want to roll on this table. The last table here. Yes. Stranger cool. Things. <laughs> Finally, you could choose to roll on or take the result from the other inhabitants and oddities. List some other creatures, people, stranger things that could exist in your settings. Uh, you can uh, you can again you can have this applied to like a specific region or your world as a whole. Right. So, all right, who wants to go first? I'll go first this time. So again, I'll do it for the percentile uh, dice roll uh, as well. So once for the home empire, once for the frontier. So twenty two. Twenty two. I don't like that one. I'll reverse it. Twenty two instead. Uh, <laughs> spectacular natural beauty this region is extremely beautiful a jewel of nature locals treasure the resplendent resplendence that they live among and other individual journey to this region to bask in its splendor well that makes sense for the the home empire it's a nice wonderfully forested area you cool. don't want to ruin it with you know mining and Open air mines and, uh, and and factories, so and magical <laughs> cacti. Yeah, yeah. they don't even grow there anyway. Well. Right. <laughs> and then for the frontier, we go with sixteen megafauna. Ooh. This region has a population of extremely large animals living in it. <laughs> At at minimum, oh. they are the size of the largest dinosaurs <laughs> from is... Earth histories, but it's they could great. even be even bigger. Some may even ha have been domesticated by local inhabitants, but others may pose a threat. That's awesome. Wow, dude. That is pretty freaking cool. And I think I have an idea from uh, something that I, I read when I was a kid, a French comic book series called, uh, called Valerian where uh, these almost nomadic people uh, ride on these huge centipedes and they build structures that almost look like, you know, two level homes stretched out on, on each segment. Nice. All right, Tony. Good. Are you going to roll on this table? Yeah. Do a strange, something strange. Yep. Okay. So um, my surface of my planet 81 constant mm -hmm. storms. Mm. The region is plagued by continuous storm systems and they are powerful and violent. Oh, that's awesome. So the, the surface, surface of my planet is very um, stormy. Um, okay. So I like that. And then something for. Um, Notable near the starting area for, for players would be 36. 36, the pit. A mm -hmm. bottomless pit sits in the prominent location in this region. Nobody knows how it came to be or whether it is natural or artificial. Any attempts to map it to find out how deep it is have failed so far. And I want this oh, to be, awesome. be the pit, they believe, is what the the energy emanating from this pit is what is causing people to gain these shark people to gain superpowers. Nice. This kind of trench. Uh, cool. Deep. Yes. So those are my my two that I rolled. Go ahead, Mr. Holmes. Okay. Energy. This energy bubbles right. up. My what is the oddity <laughs> other than the planet itself, the steampunk yeah. world that it is? Not, yeah, it's not odd enough. So. Oh, shite buckets. That's a high roll. Uh -oh. <laughs> I got a 98. Ooh. Monastery. <laughs> An organization has set up a monastery or retreat of some sort in the region. 
roll on table 410 to find out what organization this might be. The organization's members are welcoming and open about their presence to work hard to be good neighbors. Well, then that's going to be, we're going to save that for next time. Yeah, because that's in the other step. That's in the next step. Mm -hmm. So there is a monastery. Mysterious monastery. It makes sense that people would probably, that Maybe. something like that would... Maybe they're the learned ones. They they know a bit more about uh, the history of mm -hmm. technology, maybe. But yeah, they're yeah. trying to keep it from people. Maybe even until they're ready, they want to just. They yeah. The, just okay. So so table four ten are factions and organizations. Mm. So you can help define your monastery. That is true. That is true. Are they a monastery of where they're always kung fu fighting? Oh, I guess I could. Though I guess I could roll on it right now because it told me to. All right, we'll we'll do a quick roll on it. Let's see. Oh, why not? Fifty-four. <laughs> well, makes sense. Military. <laughs> oh, they're gathering okay, all the. Then. There's a monastery the militant style. knights of knights of the steam. Mm -hmm. The Knights of the Boiler. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the Knights of the Boiler Room. Knights of the Boiler okay. Room. Awesome. Led by the Almighty Cog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's no, that's what they have on their on their shields, right? Mm -hmm. That's when they spring into action. Cool. Very, very oh. cool. Yes. All right. So. So we've done step one to three. We did. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> okay. Well, do we want to do a quick review of our, each of our worlds here? We could. Have a quick little overview. Yeah, quick little overview. All right. Who wants uh, to start? I don't have a name. I'll for go my first, head. and I'll let you go last, uh, Stefan. How's that? Okay. Um, so what I've got, I've got a. Um, so far, my setting doesn't have a name, but I'm I'm draw I'm I've already got a name for my world, so it's a superhero world, and in this case, um, powered individuals are created by a singular source, perhaps a deity, or perhaps um, the pit. Um, there is a uh, unique theme of exploration because there, the surface of this world is racked with storms, but there are these small continents that are just huge mega dungeons. And these ancient dungeons are protected by immortal angelic creatures um, that need to be, and uh, these dungeons uh, are being looted by these shark people, uh, which I'm kind of looking at subverting the trope uh, or the theme of uh, evil versus good maybe the society in this shark world is generally very bloodthirsty <laughs> and cutthroat well they're sharks um, so yeah they have to be right? <laughs> uh but uh you know the the adventurers tend to be um people who maybe choose a different path um i have renaissance level technology uh, and political machinations going on um and um i've got this kind of note that uh, uh a unique notable feature is guns will use electricity instead of gunpowder uh then my world i have named it charybdis after the great greek sea monster charybdis it is an earth-like world that is cold um so the storms are these like snow uh, thunder snow type storms uh where it's snowing but there's freaking thunder and lightning and high winds um and, and it uh the world is mostly ocean society is populated into small groups of uh, schools and pods um and uh yeah uh the only other notable feature is the fact that this pit is near my beginning starting area. Mm. Um, that's this pit is 
it's a large pit and these communities ring the pit. Um, and recent, recently, these people have started developing um, superpowers. So recent development. Oh, interesting. That's what I've got. Got a name for it yet, but I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, Chris, what about you? I was starting to re-roll my population, but I rolled a one and a ten again. <laughs> one is uninhabited, the other one is Megapolis. So Megapolis <laughs> was kind of defined my population, but it, it kind of defined that whole like um, steampunk Coruscant world is what I have. Okay. Right. And the trope that I started with was this steampunky cold war era trope. But when I rolled my technology level of an iron age, that cold war era steampunkiness is what kind of destroyed this world, quote unquote, destroyed the population. Right. Because you know, nuclear war or what would you call it? not nuclear war like steampunk gearish war i don't know whatever they shot all their steampunk missiles at each other and blew each other up right <clears throat> wiped the it war so of gears. The, te- the war of gears yeah has has now this technology at like this iron age people in chariots and horses throwing like spears at one another um kind of rallying behind this monastery of military monastery you know warrior monks maybe kind of leading this i don't know struggle <laughs> that's that is that is that you know what I'm, I'm thinking this this militaristic um uh monastery is kind of oppressing the people because my theme when i was and i'm going to come back to that theme asking what would you do to survive this is going to be kind of a survival RPG setting where you're playing the the players you're playing you're trying to survive now, in this setting. So, can I can I suggest something? Absolutely. Uh, I, I had a thought. This is crazy. <laughs> I had a thought, right? So you yeah, you know think you have the whole chariots and Iron Age, uh-huh. and well that that brings to mind um, gladiator, you know arenas, uh-huh. and perhaps perhaps because the society crumbled um yep. and you've and they've they, they're just super populated but they're they're living in a uh a cold war state yeah uh, between two major cultures yeah and one of them is this the warrior monk type culture and the other are people who live this hedonistic um gladiator celebratory lifestyle all they want to do is watch blood sport there you go oh and that's your dichotomies of society you got your militaristic Mm -hmm. monks and your your hedonistic society very one is very roman and the other is um like the crusades crusaders oh thank you tony all right that gives you your cold war that i like that okay sweet all right i'm gonna make notes all right gotta go stefan your turn. All right. <laughs> I get a beat. <laughs> All right. So I've got a world that seems to be in a uh, classical antiquity sort of uh, era, technology level, Bronze Age, maybe. Uh, I was thinking, so leaning more towards it. A little bit Roman Empire kind of uh, kind of thing where it's trying to expand. I'm calling it uh, tentatively Hearts of Adamantum. Uh, Adamantum is Latin for diamonds. Uh, maybe the, these diamonds, you know, this magic takes the form of most of diamonds that have to be found on the plains. And Instead, maybe of cactus, I'm thinking that they, they have to, to hunt these rare animals that uh, that eat stuff, and then whatever they eat transforms and calcifies, almost like uh, oysters, into uh, into these little uh, hearts, diamond hearts. And that's where they have to uh, have to extract the magic from. 
Nice. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and uh, the home is lush and beautiful. They want to keep it that way. But these animals, of course, don't live anywhere near the home empire. So they have to send out people or, or chosen to uh, to go out, maybe at random uh, on a lottery. To uh, sometimes, if you, especially if you're a criminal or down on your on your luck, you, you owe money, you owe people. You, know, you have to go out there and uh, you pay it off. And of course, some people are are willing to take advantage of that. So, how far are you willing to go, and what do you want to do to get back to the home empire? Cool. So, I've got at least so far. Might change a few things, but that's my broad lines. Nice. I don't know if it has a setting type, but. Well, I think you're getting there. Um, yeah. It's definitely a, 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 I'd say, a fantasy setting. Um, fantasy, and... yeah. Uh, a little different take on fantasy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think I think we both kind of rolled that. I think Chris's is more of like a a science fiction setting. <laughs> it yeah. it feels it kind of feels almost. Yeah, with a bit of it cold. Feels like something almost that drew, like drew, something that Jules Verne would write. Mm. It's almost like a a, a post apocalyptic steampunk. Yeah. <laughs> with Cold oh. War overtones. So. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. yeah, it does. I mean, I the jewels burn. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. I don't have a name for mine yet, though. Oh, that's, that's okay. okay. Uh, we have time. We yeah. got another show on this yet. So. Oh, we do. That's it. Does it reminds me when we created yeah. races from uh, the Keyforge book? It's like sometimes you rolled at, t- at the end, and then you go, "Okay, this is what I've got as my race. I've got a giant mantis thing that flies and shoots fire." Or uh, <laughs> you guys. You guys have exactly. tiny little things that one of them has no body, and the other one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So next time we'll be we do determining the religion and cosmology, selecting our governments and general society, and then uh, filling in the details and determining yeah. maybe the special rules that we might be using exactly. in these settings. So, yeah. Yep. So that's. Uh, that's it for uh, the first part, one, two, and three. And I hope you join us for uh, the next half. We'll be continuing this and uh, wrapping it up there. And uh, if any of you guys want to see what we've uh, we've come up with at the end, let us know or what you thought. <laughs> yeah, maybe in the last show that we do on this, whether it's the second yeah. one or the third one, we'll uh, we'll we'll post our documents up on that people can see the setting document for these. That yeah. We create. Uh, oh yeah oh yeah i would i wouldn't mind seeing if uh, any of our listeners use the same method and share with us yeah i i challenge you challenge you yes Listen we means. challenge you use our methods use the use the random methods here and come up I with your throw, own and i them. throw the challenge dice at you that's right <laughs> <laughs> and a boost die. and of course the boost die for you, boost on my world, you get a boost die for any physical activity. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brag about it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it for our books of Genesis. Oh, oh, oh. So welcome to Advantageous Threats. This is the segment of our show where we build, roll, and narrate die results on some sample skill checks for our entertainment and hopefully yours. And today we have Chris, who's going to run us through a little uh, scenario. Yes, we do. <laughs> exactly. Oh, don't give it up. Don't give it up. Hey, hey, hey. What are you doing? What are we well, doing? It's that time of year, ladies and gentlemen, mm. for the Lumberjack Multiverse Championship. We have two new hatchets coming this year to the tournament, earning, looking to earn their flannel vestments and be called Lumberjack. Tony, who's your new hatchet? And hatchet, by the way, I've decided that because the Lumberjacks are our quote-unquote paladin career, Mm-hmm. Thinking the titles and levels will be based on types of axes and hatchets being the smallest. 
Yes. <laughs> will be our entry level pre lumberjack. Right. The squire kind of thing. The squire. Equal yeah, hatchets. Oh hatchets are equivalent to squires. Hey, Who yeah. you got there, Tony? Well, I have made an A moose or a Musator by the name <laughs> of Maple Hops. <laughs> <laughs> Maple is a strong backed hatchet hoping to earn his family vestments. That's right. He has a he is a fifth generation applicant to the um, the order of the axe and saw. And uh, he is hoping to earn the right to wear his grandfather's flannel vestments. Awesome. Very nice. He has one minor flaw and that he is when uh, Maple tends to get a little bit of the sauce in him, he tends to get a little scrappy. Oh, <laughs> oh awesome. <laughs> That's the maple, maple flavored whiskey, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> ancient family recipe, eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's maple, you know. Yeah, you know. You want oh, the secret? Yeah. Well, buzz off, you hoser. <laughs> that's right. Tick off, eh? Okay, speaking of hosers, Stefan. Hey. Hey, <laughs> bastard, you. What do you got for us? <laughs> Who are you playing? Have, what hatchet do you have? It's a good thing I'm not uh, offended by uh, Tony's appropriation of my Canadian heritage. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's a real good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I am playing a very different character. I am playing a uh, Zol Holay. Holay. A, uh, Holay. Sorry. <laughs> he is the, yes, he's, uh, the insect uh, like creatures. Uh, and he is part of the leaner, longer taller version of the Zolhoku. Yeah, they have four arms, the elite warriors, and they usually lead the charge with the uh, the, mm. the standard, uh, let's say, uh, more common uh, Hulku. So uh, very much uh, Mantis-like. Uh, he's the first one to uh, to apply to be a lumberjack. But he he's has first a, has a generation. Collar. First yes. generation lumberjack. Exactly. Nice. All right. He's trying to right. uh, be the first uh, Zol to uh, to be a, a lumberjack. Okay, so um, so in every lumberjack multi-universe championship, um, there are events that are done, and the way we're going to work this is uh, all events are going to be made with competitive checks with a difficulty. From, and, and I'm using the rules from page 26 of the core rulebook, where the competitor with the most total successes will win the event. Triumphs, then advantages, will break the ties. Okay? So I'll be keeping track of the number of successes and triumphs and advantages throughout this. Um, and um, the names of the events, so we're going to have nine events. We're going to do three events tonight, then we're going to do three events Next time, three events after that. And then after that, we'll see who wins between these two hatchets. Um, First event is what's called the standing block chop. Second event, the single buck. The third event, speed climbing. Fourth event is the springboard chop. Right. Number five is going to be the double bit axe throw. Which, by the way, I watched a video online the other day. Actually, it was yesterday. Uh, on all of these, some of these, because I don't know what the fuck these are. Um, <laughs> a woman won this double bit axe throw. It was great. It was so awesome. Okay. We also have log rolling, the underhanded chop. We have boom running. And, of course, the very end, we have the axe melee. <laughs> okay. So... The very first event, gentlemen, Maple and Rain, um, you are going to be using a... Sorry, my my character's name is uh, Rain Upon Rocks. I forgot to to mention that. (laughs) Rain Upon Rocks. Perfect. Okay, so in this first event, you all are going to be using a 
a five-pound single-bit axe to chop through a vertical standing aspen log measuring 12 inches in diameter, and that is 28 inches long. You are going to be making a resilience hard, a hard resilience check, and an average melee heavy check for this event. You're going to be, we're going to be adding the total successes and triumphs and advantages on this to see who the winner is. All right. So, um, we can have, uh, it doesn't really matter who goes first, who goes second. We could round robin it, um, if you'd like. Um, we'll have, uh, one of you make a resilience check. The other one make a resilience check. Then we'll go to the other one, make the melee heavy. The other one make the melee heavy. That sound good? Sounds good. And then uh, your first check, you can use your advantages and triumphs to influence your second check, um, on it so all right if you'd like all right Tony, so i have go ahead. i have maple listed here first so we'll have him go first in this event and we'll flip it up next event all right so uh what is the difficulty again i'm gonna make it's gonna be a hard resilience check here now though granted you can we're only counting to we're, though you could fail the check that really doesn't affect the narrative too much it's all about the total number of successes you're comparing to mm-hmm. rain maple and rain are comparing to you know what i mean so all right right, all right. so um use so, talents and whatever however you would like all right well uh i think you know he's pretty resilient and uh, and he mm-hmm. hasn't been drinking so he doesn't you know doesn't have that problem um yep. um but uh, so he's he's fresh in the morning. If he got up, he ate a strong maple bacon and pancake with lots of syrup breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hoping to get a boost die for that. <laughs> you know what? Just because we've played flapjacks and sasquatches, <laughs> and that's probably why you're making that reference. I'm going to say yes, Tony. <laughs> All right. You can totally get a boost eye on that. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I'm here's a question. With... Here's a question. You know what I didn't think of? Um, how story points are going to work? Well, because figured... me being the me being the GM, it doesn't. It, it's not fair for me to fuck with you in that regard. Do we do a? Each of you guys start with one in your pool, and you flip it to the other guy. I don't know, or we just not. Up to you guys. What do you want to do? I'd say since it's competitive that we just ignore story. Ignore them. This. That sounds good. Unless yeah. there can, unless um, there's a reason, I guess, um, to flip them first. I don't. Maybe we could use talents that require them. So I, I don't know. I, I just thought about that. Talents that require. I don't have any that require them. Do you, Stefan? Um, no, Lucky, I don't think so. You know, I'll tell you the. Um, if you guys don't, then we're not going to worry about it. But I could see. I could see knack mm. for it with, say, resilience or coordination, being able to take some setback dice out of this if there are. You know what I mean? But I if do. you guys don't have those talents, no, not knack do. for it. You don't. You don't use. You don't use story points for that. That's right. No, no. My character, my character does have knack for it, but yeah, it doesn't require story points. It just removes two. Uh, right. Only thing back. it would be in the. You know what? I would. I would pr- maybe in the axe melee, we could do it. Why don't we just keep the standard pool and GM, you can use yours, and you just try to keep them balanced. Um, and boss players can use ours, like normal, like you normally would. Okay. So uh, right now we sit at two on our side and one on yours. You have two. I have one. I'll keep track of I'm that. I'm not using one. I like my pool. I have one yellow, t- two green, a blue, and uh, it's hard, so I have three purple. Yep. Are you good, GM? Yes. All right. I had one success, three threat on the resilience check. Okay. Um, perhaps I ate a little too much of my breakfast. Mm. Um, yeah. And and it's sitting like a solid log in it my is. stomach. It is hitting. It is sitting right in that lower lower left side. So you're gonna get a um, you're gonna get a uh, you're gonna get a setback die on your on your melee heavy check when you're because you're because you're you're like you're trying to go fast and you're like you're trying to hold back the 
<laughs> it's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. <laughs> now this is trying to chop through a vertical standing aspen twelve. So it's just chopping. A lot oh, of chopping. chopping. Oh yeah, that's right. It's a lot of chop. It's a lot of chopping. That's why. But I'm starting to feel a stitch in my side from you are you from are. breakfast. Okay. All right. You are. Yep. 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 <laughs> All right, uh, but one success. One success. I might mark that down. Yep. All right. Awesome. Okay. So Rain, your resilience. Yes. How are you doing? Uh, so she, he's got one, one green, one yellow. Mm-hmm. Versus three purple. Okay. So he's gonna do this and. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it. No one, uh, no the dice. Heard. No, just gonna ask for something, but no, I'm not. Uh, unfortunately, he fails with okay. one advantage. One advantage. Okay. So unfortunately, he's not used to these movements and uh, for doing this for that long. Okay. Eventually he does get it, but it takes a, it takes a while. Okay, then. What would you like to do with your advantage? So you've got a rhythm going, at least. At least. You know, but you are... Yeah, you're, well, you're slowing down a bit. But you mm-hmm. are in a slow and steady might win the race. You, maybe. Because Maple's yeah, kind of... He's kind of getting that little sciatica. That, yeah. that the pancakes are pushing on that sciatica a little. So maybe... Whoop. Maybe yeah, I'll just give myself a, a boost dice for the uh, the the other check as the melee he, heavy. Yeah, as he gets into a nice rhythm and gets a nice mm-hmm. feel for the for the oh, weapon yeah. or for the axe. Oh yeah, he's alternating. He's Both alternating ball. the down the downstroke and the upstroke, mm-hmm. making a nice wedge in there, getting halfway through. All mm-hmm. right, Maple, melee heavy average, melee oh, heavy check with a setback die on this because he's. <sighs> Oh yeah, but to me, he's a little bit. I have a I have a maneuver when you're making okay. combat check. I'd like to aim my final shot to try and hit that just right so the log falls. Perfect. So I'm going to aim. Okay. Um, and I really want to succeed on this, so I will be flipping the story point. Um, okay. So that will give me a solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, three yellow dice, one blue, two purple, and a black. What do you are you happy with it, GM? You know, I am going to flip that story point just because you did have the three threat last time. Um, you are you are you are aiming. You're getting in there. You're going to take that one last swing to just go through. Mm-hmm. And and right as that's happening, it's coming up. You might puke it all out. You might slip. Who knows? <laughs> all right, we'll see. <laughs> It might that be maple? brilliant. It might that, be messy. Yeah, that maple <laughs> bacon might come up. It might. Okay. Well, I had two successes and a single threat. Ooh. Okay. Two successes and a single threat. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty. All right. That looks good. Yeah. So you just slice that thing off of there. Mm-hmm. <coughs> 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 And you are tasting your breakfast again. (laughs) Uh, But we'll see how rain does. Yeah. So Uh, rain is is used to uh, melee uh, this kind of heavy weapons. He's got two yellow and a green. And there's two purple. He's got his boost eyes from his advantage. And being a whole eye... He's got, with four limbs, he can perform a second maneuver, a free maneuver, without costing him strain. Still limited to two maneuvers. So he's going to do double aim. Okay. <laughs> so giving him a total of three boost dice. Very nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go for it. King of the boost dice, Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving myself boost dice, so. Okay. <laughs> So those are advantages. Let's cancel out the advantages. Success, success. Me off when he rolled the first check without any, but now I see yeah. why. So he could have yeah. three on the second one. Jeez, <laughs> be. So I managed to get two successes 
and, and one advantage. No, no advantages. Yes, yes. Sorry, one advantage. Two successes, one Two advantage. Success, one advantage. Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So your guys are coming through, going through, going through. Maple, that one swing pays off. You aim in there. Kish just takes that last one off. You're oh. You finish right before Rain does with your three successes. <sighs> Rain, you come in with your two successes with two advantage. You look good doing it, though. Excellent yeah. setting for a first generation lumberjack. Mm. Not bad. Not People bad are all with the two with the two advantages. It it it, uh-huh. it, it uh, caters to his uh, motivation of fame, his desire. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> you make it look. You actually made it look good. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Maple got it done fast. Doesn't matter. He won the event. <laughs> We're going to next event. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all that matters. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Now. In between events. Yes. I'll go purge. <laughs> Perfect. So he binged. Now, everybody out there, especially you little girls. Now you listen. No, I'm just kidding. That's so horrible. Um, No. Yeah. So before the event, he binged. After the event, he's going to purge. <laughs> into the single obviously bar. i ate too much for breakfast i need to get clear up some of that <laughs> obviously and because uh, you were and you did end up with that extra threat at the end of it um yeah you'll purge it Ugh. okay now we're on to competition number the event event number two called the single buck um, in this event, you, our competitors are going to use a six foot long cross cut saw to saw through a 20 inch diameter white pine log for the best time. This saw has the cumbersome three quality, which means if you don't have a brawn of three mm-hmm. for every point you have below that, you will be getting a boost. Uh, you will be getting a setback die on every check you make. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, rain will be getting one setback to this. Okay. Okay. So this again will be a hard resilience check. Cause you got this big freaking saw. <laughs> this is going to be a single. So you're just going to be just sawing, going to saw through this thing. Um, again, I watched a video. <laughs> Wiry dude beat this big <laughs> burly dude. It's all about <laughs> technique here. Right. So just got to have the resilience to do it. So we're going to, again, it's going to be a hard resilience check. And then, mm-hmm. uh, a heavy melee, average heavy melee check. I'm going to add right. the successes, triumphs, and advantages to see who wins. Rain, we will start with you. All right. So just like before, uh, his resilience is a green and a yellow. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the setback die is because uh, it's a bit too cumbersome for him. He's only you, have a brawn, you have a brawn of two? Brawn of two. Okay, so setback die. Yeah. And three purple. But I'm going to try and ask for a boost dice by saying that uh, being you know, a Mantis person, he, it, it's a motion that's familiar to him uh, with his martial arts training, combat training. Mm-hmm. Part of his katas, that he may have done these motions back and forth many, many, many times. Okay. <laughs> I'll Thank buy you. that. <laughs> wax on, wax off kind of thing. <laughs> Left a circle, right a circle. Four times in a row because you have four yeah. arms. Okay, got it. All right, well, the boost dice came up blank, so there, there you go. <laughs> All right, what did you get? I get, unfortunately, a failure to okay. watch. Everything cancels out. Zero, zero, Ooh. zero across the board. Zero, yep. Okay, so you're getting, you're like before, Slow and steady wins the race. You're, mm-hmm. you're huffing, you're puffing. Maple, you purged. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Maple, you you washed it down. You, it's out. Okay. What you got? Um, I have one yellow, two green versus your three purple pool. Okay. I am, um, so I'm gonna get the crowd warmed up before I start. 
Okay. And I'm going to get them cheering in a chant back and okay. forth. And okay. that's um, – so his, uh, his uh, motivation, his strength oh. is um, glory. He's a glory hound. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so, the name, Maple – last name is what? Maple Hops. Hops. I mean – Hops is a well-known. I mean, five generations of lumberjacks. That's a yes. well-known name. They, they yep. you're famous. The glory. Yep. So you kind of got that. So your adrenaline is pumping. Your blood is flowing, helping with that resilience. And you're gonna, you're asking for Busta. Is that what you? Is that what well, you? yeah. I mean. Okay. Sure. You can <laughs> if you're gonna say no, then I was gonna use that as my reason for flipping. But <laughs> <laughs> now you get a Busta. That's a good All right. reason. That's a good All right. reason. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Uh, one simple success. So, oh, um, a lot of washing there, but, uh, okay. yeah, one simple success. And it was from my boost die. <laughs> so oh. it was the cheer of the crowd. <laughs> it's got me. Yeah. Got adrenaline pump. <laughs> right. They gave me a rhythm, you know, a faster and, rhythm, and, a little faster and, rhythm. You're thinking that's a crowd cheering along. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay. They're, so back they keep up. yelling hops, 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 hops. hops. But it's, it's hops, and it's opposed by a big foot stomp on the stands. You know, it's hops, 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 oh, hops. hops. <laughs> we will, we will hops you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Raining down the stones. Okay, let's get you. Let's see you this average melee heavy right. check. So that's as you're slicing through this white pine. Yep, so two difficulty, two purple, and the setback dice still for the cumbersome. Versus two yellow and a green. Okay. So, well, of course, seeing that everyone's cheering for him. Can I uh, ask? Yes, sir. I hate, I hate to be this guy. I really do. What is your but you, Stefan, mm -hmm. how do you have two yellow and a green with a two brawn? Because, oh, wait a minute. No, he's got finesse. Oh, that's right. Finesse is only for midday light. Mm -hmm. I took finesse uh, for uh, for the jelly, but I forgot it's uh, melee late. Oh, this is not. You're not using finesse in this. Sorry, dude. No, no, no. It's me. Sorry. However melee. many ranks you have in melee, it's melee heavy, dude. Melee heavy. Yeah, no, no, no. no it's why I, I just uh, apply the agility uh, instead of to melee heavy instead of light. Sorry for that. Okay, Whew. I'm like, damn. <laughs> You got a lot of ranks in it. I don't think, yeah, you can only put two ranks in it. Yeah, we can only have two creation. starting ranks at character creation. Yeah. So that's there what. There you go. The, I, like I said, I hate to be that guy, but we want to mm -hmm. do it right. Yep. That's yep. right. Oh, that's fine. So it's two yellow only. All right. All right. Uh, and I'm going to flip because okay. uh, he's, he, he's seeing the. Uh, everyone cheer, or he hears everyone cheering for him and. One of his desires, uh, of course, is fame. He wants to be popular, too. Hopefully, maybe he'll get them to cheer his name. Rain, rain. Okay. Well, you know, because I because I did it for Tony last time, I'm mm -hmm. going to flip it back. I'm going to flip it for you. Right. Turn one of those into a um, into a red. And Not you know what? I'm telling you, this is your first time on a big stage, man. Though, yep. you are, though fame is your what you like. You're kind of getting a little nervous because it's exactly. not raining there cheering, dude. It is nope. hops, and you're like, fuck. Nope. And it's not in the rhythm with you. It's faster than what you're – then you're – it's throwing you off. <laughs> there well, you go. <laughs> I managed to get at least a success and an advantage. Okay, one Yay! success, one advantage. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. What we – all right, maple. Okay. What you um, got? Now, are these things, are these saws considered an improvised weapon? No. No? Are they designed? No, they're not. Okay. They're they not. are designed to right. do this work, for sure. All right. All right. So. Though they are, though the reason why I did put it cumbersome three is because if you look at these, it's a six foot long saw. It is big. Oh. It's bulky. You know, so. I'm a big brawny A moose. I can handle it. I'm not okay. going to change my dice pool in any way, shape, or form. I'm just going to roll with it as is. As, if you're happy, GM, I have two yellow and a green versus the two purple difficulty. I'm good with it. All right, here we go. Oh. Hops, hops, hops. We will. 
Uh, whoa, four successes. Holy. Four successes? Yeah. Okay. Nothing Holy else. Okay. Cats. Whoa. Okay. So this is what happens. So rain, you're like, whew, whew, you're going, you're going. You're like, all right, sweet. Halfway through. Excellent. And you hear clunk. The freaking <laughs> yeah. maple's done. Yep. <laughs> you're like, oh, and you're, I keep going. You're like, oh, and you just keep on going. You're just, yep. and you're like, yep, no problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's going. And then you go. And with that advantage, you know, because yeah. you did not stop, you're like going. And with that advantage, that last little bit, you start hearing rain, rain, rain. <laughs> and it just a little bit kind of boosts you up just a little bit. A little bit, so. But yeah, man, he just smoked you on that yeah, one. With five, me, six, but, but you'd still kept still your composure. Yeah. Still respectful. Still respectable. All right. Excellent. There we go. All righty then. Okay, so after the two events, we've got uh, Maple winning the first two events here. The standing block chop and the single buck. Now, the third event. Any more binging and purging between events? Um, Eating any bacon or? No, you know I'm tempted to chug some maple syrup, but I think I'll be all right. Um. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, the third event for tonight for our advantageous threats here um, is going to be the speed climbing event. Now. Each competitor is going to use a uh, spurred climbing gear on their feet and steel core climbing rope to scale a 60-foot, and yes, I did put it in here, 18-meter tall cedar pole. Climb up to it, top of Oh, it's 18 meters, does. eh? Oh, this is a small one. No oh, problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, the speed climbing, there's also a second speed climbing event, which is a 90-foot, but, you know. Your hatchets. So you're doing a 60 foot one on this on this one. This is going to require a average resilience check and a hard athletics check. Okay, so we're flipping it a little bit. Not as resilient, but it's more of a pulling. It's more of it's more of the more of an athletic right. type technique to pull yourself up. Okay, right. strength, those kinds of things. So. Okay. Um, We'll start with Maple this time with the resilience check average. Okay. Um, I, so I've done pretty much um, a lot of climbing in my days. Uh, I'm going to say it's probably something that uh, Maple really enjoys. Well, mo- um, Moose, they're natural climbers, right? Exactly. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, they are. Moose the Moose yeah. are natural climber. Exactly. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's a big I, mean, I see them in the trees Canada. up here in Minnesota all the fucking time. Oh, I, mean, I go down 94 out towards like North Dakota, fucking see them all over the place. Well, that's it. It's a big problem in Canada. They just drop. You know, like, He's on the highways. <laughs> God that's... forbid you walk under a branch, man, and you get hit by a. <laughs> oh, hey, 1,500 pound moose, you watch yeah. out. <laughs> I say, that's how they try to cross the highways but sometimes they miss you know right, right on right on a small honda civic Magic. all right so because oh, i'm uh, I, I, an avid climber i do it for fun uh i'm gonna go ahead and spend a story point uh and uh, upgrade my check uh, um, classic. <laughs> perfect <laughs> okay <laughs> And uh, so I'm looking look at two yellow and a green versus two yep. purple. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Avid climber. <laughs> One single success, damn it. Again. Uh, that a lot of canceling die? out. Was that an a boost die of being uh, avid no, you didn't give, uh, no, that wasn't boost. That was an upgrade. Oh, the upgrade. So the two upgraded dice, two yellow dice, canceled out the, the – they were each a failure and an advantage. They canceled out the failure and the threat on the two purple dice, leaving me with just by my natural brawn, one green, just because I'm brawnier. That's right. <laughs> that, I, that I got there. You were able to – you were able to – Keep your your so this is the resilience check. So you're you're right. kind of you're going up. It's you're just steady, natural, you're strength. steady. 
yep, yep, you're steady. Keeping that breath going, breathing in, breathing out. Rain. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, Rain, being a bug, totally not a natural climber. Right? <laughs> no, He's like, no. <laughs> well, they're no, always no. digging in the dirt, rutting. <laughs> he did. He does have the, 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 the wall walker talent. It allows him to climb. Ooh, what does that what is what does that wall walker talent do? This it allows him to basically climb. Let me just double check it on it's a key forge talent. I thought it was be appropriate mm-hmm. for him. You know oh, what? Wall walker, yeah. I'm I'm calling you out on that. That's <laughs> not on the talent list in our freaking setting book. <sighs> no, it's not. You can't right. use you can't use a talent out of he <laughs> Ford, what the fuck are you doing, man? We already have a list. You know what? I'm, uh, you know, all right, all right. Automatic Never setback. Mind, automatic setback day. No, 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 I'll remove it for I'll the rest of no, the competition. I, negative oh. style points. I, I, I think <laughs> it's, it's an automatic upgrade. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the list of uh, of talent just for the setting. I'm, I apologize. I didn't mean to. Oh, you, no, you're apologizing to our listeners, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, it's that's... all good. It's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it totally is, and we're totally calling you out at it, which is hilarious. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. Uh, I feel it better anyway than not to have it anyhow, because uh, then it just takes away from the, the the point of having the competition in the dice uh, the dice rules. Well, you're using this technique anyway, so you're really not using yeah. your bug climbing ability. It has to no. be this. So, resilience average. All right, so one purple, one two purple, one per, one green, one yellow. All right. That. Uh, he will just roll all. Just because of it. Just I'll flip one point. He really tries to outshine maybe a maple. Story point. Yep. For the story point. Okay, that puts all of them on my side. <laughs> oh <right>. no. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I get a total of one success and one threat. One success and one threat. Okay. Okay. So you're feeling the you're feeling the um the pressure just a little bit there. It's um it's it's tall. It's a tall climb. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna get a setback die on your on your climb on this on your athletics. Right. Um, check here coming up so i need a hard athletics check from maple and because you are climbing 60 feet sorry 18 meters into the air it's only 18 meters eh? i got this (laughs) you got this go ahead and flip i'm flipping one over to you okay so turn one to a red one of those to a red Uh, and then step uh, if you're building up your pool do the mm -hmm. same i'll flip one for each of you now, I didn't do it for the resilience because I don't think the gear would come into effect. But this is actually kind of like, a, is this a, the right tool for the job? Um, this gear, is it? Is it? Um, oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, you can. So get we get a boost die, die to this one. You will. To the yes, athletics. You will. Absolutely. I mean, uh, both of us it. will get it. So I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, arguing for both it. of us to get it. So. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That is a so. <laughs> um, looking at a two green, one yellow, blue, and a purple, and a red athletics check um it is a hard athletic so it would be two purple oh red. okay all right <clears throat> sorry i did miss the hard because it is all right i mean i it, it feels like a hard technique to really get down you know what i mean not okay. everybody can do it only lumberjacks <laughs> that all right. looks good oh my difficulty dice came up negative whoop, oh. whoop. uh oh. except for the challenge die uh okay. that that mitigated my success by okay. one success three advantage Ooh, okay, that could <laughs> okay, that could come into it here. So, like we said, triumphs then advantage, cancel tie, you know, break ties. So, mm-hmm. all right, um, that's but good. To use my three advantage, uh-huh. what I'd like to do um, in the next session uh, yep. of this mm-hmm. is I'd like to have an extra maneuver. Excellent. Okay. I'll make a note of it in the notes here. Okay. All right. So I've got in the next event. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Right. Stefan, what so, you got? So I've got two, just two, he doesn't have any ranks in athletics, so two green, two mm -hmm. purple, a red, and then a black and a blue. So lots okay. of colors. And I think we still have one, uh, have one story point on our side. I'll flip it to upgrade. To um, no, you didn't. You didn't have one on your side. Um, yeah, you did because you flipped you one on me. Because I, I flipped it for yeah. you, but it's. Go ahead. It's technically it simultaneously, it. but you do let need it. Okay, yeah, go ahead, flip it. Okay. I'll, <laughs> let, right. the comp okay. I'll let his competitor decide. <laughs> let the rookie it. have it. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. Good. All right. <laughs> uh, still no triumphs, but lots of successes. Ooh. Uh, those two cancel out. There we go. I'm left with two successes and a threat. Oh, okay then. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, so... <clears throat> How it goes is it is freaking amazing how quick the moose can move up a fucking cedar pole, man. But what's Did even I win by more, an antler? <laughs> but what's even more amazing is how fast rain caught up and won. Okay. With three go. three successes to your two successes and three advantage. So, Rain, you win the speed climbing event there. Just barely, just yeah, I, I win it. Excellent. Um, yeah, so that is our... Uh, as, he, as he raised both sets of uh, claws, you know, overhand, like, you know, yay, yay, shaking it on both sides and alternating. <laughs> oh, thanks, Tony. All right. <clears throat> oh, yeah, well. Thanks. <laughs> That that uh, that was indeed. That's cool. I like it. Did you, yeah. Did you like it? I don't know. I it, you know it was a brainstorm yesterday. Saw the saw the saw the uh, show notes yesterday, and then Tony, you're saying you know one of us picked something, and immediately I'm like, you know what? I want to do the friggin' lumberjack competition, and <laughs> I just spent a few hours last night putting this together. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh yeah. Can hope, our listeners, hope our listeners weren't overly bored. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that, Tony. <laughs> and you know what? If you guys were, we weren't. I wasn't. Nope. I quit. <laughs> oh no, I, I don't think oh. they were. I, oh no, I'm I'm keeping my co my co host on their toes. Like, see, yeah, no, 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 that, that doesn't count. Oh, okay, I can't use this towel. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so next time we're going to be doing the springboard chop, the double bit axe throw, and the log rolling. The springboard gonna... chop is interesting. <coughs> GM character on it. <coughs> GM character on it. Well, I'm expecting somebody who runs a fucking podcast can create a character, a legal character, Stefan. <laughs> I just picked the wrong towel. <laughs> Love you, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, then. Um, so yeah, dudes. Um, well, that was our that was our advantageous threats again. Hope you everybody enjoyed it. To be yep. Thank you, Chris. We continued. All right, thanks, guys, for putting up with me. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me. Well, that's our show for tonight, everybody. Um, next time, we are... Tony's running um, the finale of Primordial Machina, The Crying Sky, our actual play series. Um, looking forward to that, dude. Yeah, I hope, uh, I, I hope our listeners have, uh, enjoy it, too. Yep. And then, um, I, mean, and I, believe, I believe I've decided to pick up the... Um, GM reigns after that, and we'll be running you guys through uh, some uh, primordial, not primordial, sorry, primeval thule mm -hmm. um, that I've converted to uh, Genesis. So, very nice. So, Stefan, 
Any mm-hmm. news this past week or two? Yes, yes. There's been some uh, some news uh, around April 7th. Um, I've been also uh, looking at the Discord server for Edge Studios. And um, they've announced that the next official product that they'll be coming out with is the setting book for Twilight Imperium, the space opera. You didn't yell it like Tony has in the notes here with like three exclamation <laughs> oh. points, all caps. What the fuck? All right. Twilight Imperium. Imperium. Oh, Imperium. Oh, hangover. Hangover. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the famous uh, tabletop board game that they've got. Uh, set up where you play different races trying to uh, vie for uh, political and military might uh, they'll uh, they're adapt- adapting it to genesis and uh, they had a few images of the cover uh, looks pretty cool and uh, so it says they should be out by july 2021 but of course not saying any specific date uh, hopefully it will stay around that time. Uh, could cool. be delays. Hopefully not. Hopefully. So not. at least we have an announcement, an official announcement that Edge, yes, is coming up with some products for our beloved Genesis. And it'll be just in time because I think we're running out of books to stuff to talk about. <laughs> so it'll be just in time for us. Um, well, at least of- yeah, well, any official books. There's plenty of other stuff we could uh, talk about. Right, right. Official book stuff. Right, right. Yeah. Right. You got a point. All right. Yeah. It's minor, so, uh, but it's a point. Minor. Hey. <laughs> Give it to me anyway. So. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to uh, tell us about your settings, mm-hmm. um, yes. reach out to us. Um, and uh, Or, or that, email us your fill yeah. in filled in setting the random roles that you did <laughs> right right that's what i was talking about okay. uh, finding the narrative podcast at gmail.com you can talk to stefan and i on facebook finding the narrative you can talk to all three of us at finding the narrative on mayway or if you want some quiet alone time with our beloved canadian and that would be on twitter at ftn underscore genesis Hey. Otherwise, listen to us on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Amazon Music, and more. Yes, excellent. All right. Well, guys, it was a fun show. Yeah, it was. Uh, even though I was hungover, I, I enjoyed myself. Good. So, good. good. I laughed a lot. Yes. So, it it always helps. About. That's all it's all about. As long as you're having fun, man. All right. Yeah. So... Uh, this is Tony saying, let's tell a story. Spend that story point. Hmm. And this is Stefan saying, stare at as for those boost dice. Even if you have more than one, it's even better. <laughs> and this is Chris telling you to remember the rule of cool. Leave plenty of room between eating your flapjacks and doing a lumberjack competition. <laughs> and just have fun doing it, everybody. Good night. Bye. Adios. Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast, is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned on this show. Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of their respected owners. All items are used under fair use and educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.